Hey everybody, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time zone you're in. We have a, a special discussion video for this channel today because I gotta talk about this. <laughs> I gotta talk <laughs> about this with fellow Final Fantasy VII players because I just couldn't wait until like I, I do like a, a standard Johnny versus video because I gotta play the game again. First off, it's gonna be like another forty hours. You're never seeing that video for like another month. So <laughs> let's just let's have something to satiate the appetites till that. So we're gonna be talking about the Final Fantasy VII remake with a, a got a discussion here with Derek from Game Explain and Clement. Always lovely to have you two in this channel in some form of capacity. Thank. Thank you very much for joining me today and before we uh get discussions going we should say obviously big big spoiler label for this video i mean it's going to be in the title of the video but sometimes it's not enough and we got to just say right now if you are playing the game right now if you are thinking about playing the game if you are familiar with the game and since it's uh, over the past 20 years stop watching this video go play the game then come back and watch it please help this channel because ad revenue is really low <laughs> <laughs> even if you're familiar with the original there are big spoilers yeah. here yeah, yeah, exactly. There are massive spoilers for this one. We do not want to be the ones to ruin that for you. So go ahead, go play the game, pause the video, leave this tab open for like two weeks, and then come back and play the video <laughs> when you're good and dandy. That that said, uh, well, guys, uh, I don't know exactly uh, where to begin. I guess we'll, we'll begin with a uh, general consensus. Uh, Derek, we can start with you if you want to. I really like the game front uh, front to back. I think there's only minor quibbles here and there, and that's mostly as far as graphics in the way of graphics and how it handles certain things. I mean, the game is absolutely gorgeous, but it does struggle at certain points. And uh, people have pointed this out, of course, depending on what areas you get to. But overall, I love the battle system. I love how they've deepened the characterizations. I personally feel that all of the new stuff they've added adds to it. it doesn't just feel like, all right, we're just killing time here so we can get to the 40 hour mark. It, it it all feels kind of necessary or at least deepens things enough that I embrace it. And I'm I, I don't know how I'll end up here with the with the with you two guys, but I like the ending. I just I just enjoyed it the, the entire way through. I uh, was enthralled. I'd say probably the weakest moment for me personally was chapter 17. Uh, and going through that gauntlet. <laughs> Eventually, we got to go. I mean, it's still good, but it was like, boy, I was ready to get through that section. I loved it. I really, really loved it. Like the ending, I have a little bit of issues with. Again, we'll get to that when we get to that. <laughs> but yeah. up to that point, up to the ending, I was in love with everything. And this is probably like my favorite Final Fantasy in the last decade and a half, honestly. Compared to like 13 and 15 and all the various spinoffs, this has been like the most high quality, the most fun. Like I love the battle system. Uh, I'm currently going through the game on hard mode and I am still having a lot of fun, even though there's this huge pressure to like, that I can't use items during battles in hard mode. Uh, but it's still engaging. I still love... It, it, it mixes a little bit of, like, Kingdom Hearts this time around into the combat system with, like, the shortcut commands and everything. But it's also got, like, elements of 13 where it has a stagger system. But, like, this time it's done right. It's not automatic where I'm just pushing one button over and over and over again the entire time. I'm actually switching out my characters. I'm actually stopping the action to put up protective shields and poison people and it still feels like a tactical rpg despite the action setting and it's really really enjoyable i loved pretty much every boss fight in the whole entire game uh maybe maybe not the one at the don corneo coliseum but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about you that one was i yeah it was a bit of a pain but just the, the reveal of it was oh, like the reveal was awesome <laughs> you're waiting for it the entire time i was like where's the hell house <laughs> it's like i was promised the hell house <laughs> we all wanted to see that thing in hd yeah, and exactly. boy did they deliver I, it delivered big time with the, also fuck that boss too because i didn't i didn't have the assess material on oh no i that thing was on me all the time i didn't immediately think about like color coordination thinking of the two elemental spells and all that it's like oh this is taking forever <laughs> <laughs> I, I still haven't fully figured out it's god mode and how to get it knock it out of that i just have to wait for a certain point but otherwise i'm 
good. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, the soundtrack is incredible. Like, not only are there, like, so many remixes, there must be, like, seven different variations of the battle theme. Yes, there is. And yeah. they're all good. <laughs> they're all great. Um, but, mm. but even the new music, I really liked some of the new stuff that they introduced into this game that wasn't in the original title. So even in terms of, like, new compositions, I thought the music was fantastic. Yeah, like you said, the cutscenes and how we get to know Avalanche and how we get to know the slums and what they're dealing with and how they feel about the bombings and the terrorist actions of Avalanche. It's it's just so fully fleshed out and realized. And I had a blast. And the side quests, I think, were actually pretty enjoyable. I know this is kind of like um some people didn't like the side quests from what I've been seeing online, but I thought they were great because they added like character moments for Cloud in them. The rewards were good. And some of the fights were freaking awesome. I don't know if you you fought mm-hmm. the behemoth. I did. Oh, yeah. But the behemoth was one of my favorite fights in the whole entire yeah, game. I have to agree. That was probably my favorite fight in the game. I, the behemoth was good. Uh, I had a big goofy smile when I had to fight the Tonberry. That was out of nowhere. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we got a new toy for you to play with. I was like, get, get away from it, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> have, have you guys uh, taken on the um, VR missions in the Shinra building yet On for the hard stuff after you complete all the other missions throughout the game? Not on hard no, mode. No, I'm not, I'm not on hard mode. Okay. So, yeah, the la- you don't have to be on hard mode, but the last couple are you can only take on in hard mode and this includes the eventual super boss which i still haven't beaten yet because god i need to do some grinding as far as uh having materia ready and uh having my weapons set uh we'll get into that uh i guess once we're doing more spoiler stuff but yes uh one of the battles is a bomb and a tomberry at the same time (sighs) and it's it's rough it's like you have to really figure out like okay when's it going to come after me and oh god if i'm playing as Aerith, it's just going to try to trap me and then it's just going to get close it's like oh god this thing is a nightmare but i love it (laughs) it's not real it can't hurt you (laughs) this was a grand adventure i had the biggest fucking smile on my face (laughs) playing this game like and at certain points of the adventure i honest to god felt like i was 10 years old again because mm-hmm. I yeah. was there, if I, I was there from the start. Like I, I got the original in '97. I had yeah. the biggest loads of nostalgia going into this, and that paid off tremendously in all the best ways. Getting to certain points of the game. That said, I still think that, like in and of itself, this game is a really, really good action RPG that I think anybody should play if you're at, at the very least interested. Like if you if you thought. Uh, you were talking about uh, Kingdom Hearts and all that, and if you, if you thought Kingdom Hearts was maybe, you know, maybe a little too zany at times, maybe a little, something a little more grounded, I think Seven Remake hits that and then some, and you should definitely consider playing it. That said, I really wish I didn't play Kingdom Hearts before playing this, <laughs> because there are a lot of times where I'm getting my ass knocked into the air. I'm trying to do an air recovery. <laughs> Nothing's working. <laughs> it's like, this sucks. <laughs> it, it, it's it's definitely a, a it's slightly more grounded take on the action RPG formula, but it's still very gratifying to land attacks when you stagger enemies, when you utilize Cloud's Punisher mode effectively and counter stuff, when you like use tactical mode to set up spells with Aerith so that you can pressure enemies and then send everybody down and kick uh, Abzu uh, spawn in the in the ass because it's <laughs> causing you a lot of shit. It's like, <laughs> go to hell, Abzu. <laughs> uh, but then that the game is full of that kind of stuff. And it is so rewarding, properly strategizing how to approach certain things that in a way that I didn't get from, I have to agree, um, from 13 specifically. And, and I, I didn't finish 13 for the record. I'm not going to yeah. go into why. Me <laughs> and I also want to say that as someone who wanted to give 15 another chance, I, I put off 15 because I got too sidetracked from other things. That's not necessarily the game's fault, but 7 Remake hooked me way stronger than 15 did in the beginning, despite liking 15. So I should say that if you're still on the fence about it, whether because it's a Final Fantasy game in the modern era or it's good square, put that aside. This is a great game. and You should get this. Mm-hmm. I only played 15 for maybe an hour and a half before or two hours before. I'm like, ah, I'm good. I put about 12 <laughs> hours in the 15 and that was but I was like doing everything along the way. That includes side quests and all that. Uh, pretty, pretty much similar to how I handled this game. Like as, as soon as everything was available, like side quests and all that, I, main story went to the side. <laughs> it's like, I don't care about that right now. I want to do I want to do side quests. I want to I, I want to help these these folks like get on with their lives so I can learn more about the sector because that's what I was more interested about this. Like, if we're going to go into 
like expectations of whether or not this game fulfilled them or not. That was my big thing about it. Because once you learned that it was going to be an episodic release and that the first part of it was just going to be Midgar and it was still a full-fledged RPG that we're talking about 30, 35 hours, I'm thinking, oh my God. All right, so I want to see what they'll do to flesh out the city or at least the sectors that we go into. Maybe we go into sectors that we didn't go into before. And that's kind of not what they do here, or, uh, which I found a little disappointing. I understand it's like eight sectors. <laughs> There's only so many times you can go <laughs> to an, an inn in sector one. It's like, oh, look, the sector two inn looks exactly the same, only it's green <laughs> instead of blue. But they go ahead and flesh out the sectors that we already are familiar with. So like sector seven slums are way bigger. They have, there's more substance to them. The Sector 5, the Sector 6 slums, uh, the wall market. Everything is fleshed out, and our journey between the sectors is fleshed out to add more context or substance to uh, the storylines, bits that were kind of skimmed over in the original game that you didn't necessarily need explanations as to why we got here from where we were earlier, but it's there anyway, and it's much appreciated. You know, uh, one one of my favorite things from this game was something that was kind of just kind of ignored and brushed off in the original was that the Mako reactor explosion in sector eight was apparently bigger than they expected in the original game. Jesse is torn up about this because she's wondering, did I follow the recipe, right? Maybe something went wrong. It shouldn't have been that big. It's on the news and I'm feeling pretty bad about that. And it's quickly ignored after that. <laughs> like, it, mm-hmm. That is just quickly dropped. They go into that more. And as a result, we learn more about Jesse. We learn more about all of the Avalanche members here, which I love because these were kind of, they were just kind of throwaway characters that were there to develop Barrett, which is fine, but it's like, I liked Wedge. <laughs> I liked Biggs. <laughs> I liked Jesse. So can we get a little more into them? And that's what this game does. That's what this game does for a lot of characters, and that's what I really wanted from this game, and it delivered. I love the characterization of all three. Wedge, Wedge's whole thing about, like, I need to refill feel the, uh, the old tummy. <laughs> I got yeah. a little... Yeah, he's fat. Yeah, he's fat. <laughs> he's fat. He's a stoner. He's voiced by Badger. <laughs> I've not watched Breaking Bad, so I have no idea who Badger is. But yeah, but but the, even that, they gave Wedge two different hero moments. That's pretty cool. Like you don't expect that. They they change that up. You get a little bit more backstory on Biggs. You get to see a lot more backstory on Jesse, and uh, makes what we know is going to happen even more devastating for her because. You do get to see one new section, and that is the plate of Sector 7. Not the slums, but the actual on top of the plate of Sector 7. And that was kind of cool. It's like, oh, here's how well-to-do people live in the city. And it's not just like a city central. This is more like a suburbs area, which I found really fascinating. There wasn't a whole lot to it. But it still added that little extra depth that I appreciated. It's like when Johnny mentioned like this game brought him back to being a kid again. The Sector 7 plate was like one of those moments where like you're walking around with Biggs and Wedge while Jesse just ran off. And she's ex- and Biggs is explaining that uh, Jesse's dad got Mako poisoning and how she used to be an actress at the Gold Saucer and all this other stuff. And there's like it's a beautiful moonlit night and the music is so calming and you're just walking down that street. And it felt like such a magical final fantasy event a final fantasy moment that you don't do in video games too often and it's just that kind of atmosphere that kind of presentation is something i've been missing from final fantasy for a very very long time and uh it was cozy this game despite being in the slums where people are oppressed it was cozy in a way you know what i mean (laughs) i mean it's fascinating to see how much they how different sector seven slums are to sector five slums and and of course wall market is extremely different from both (laughs) yeah uh, but I, I, I like that extra personality given to it, the way people are. There's a lot more kids in Sector 5. There's a lot more just greenery all around, and that might be Aerith's influence. And Midgar is so well represented here. It feels like such a real place and as, as you go around. I love that you can get like a, a pseudo world map where they show you all the places you've been. It was kind of cool just bringing it up every so often and seeing like, oh, wow, I did that and it was there and just. Gave you a sense of scale. Yeah, and like just the overall graphical presentation of the really opened my eyes. And, you know, because of the original game, everything was pre rendered over the top camera angle. They didn't really give you an idea of the scope of the areas that you were 
dwelling in or the all, all the in between junctures. I, I remember like when we get to uh, Sector Five for the first time, when you have to make your way through like the Collapse Expressway or uh, the the road between Sector Five and Six, and I'm like I'm recognizing all the familiar set pieces, but it's like, wow, is this really all of this that I had to go through in the original <laughs> game? Because this is a long trek. <laughs> it's so funny how often in the original game, an area that's like an hour or and a half in this game is like two screens yeah and i think if you guys could agree with me with with this one the most egregious example i can think of is when you're on your way to the sector five reactor and you had to deal with those uh sun lamps and all that 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 was two screens in the original game there wasn't even anything you did in there you were just you 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 crawled up the ventilation shafts you met you met up with bigs and i think wedge at one point or another, and then you collect an item, and then you, you're you in Sector 5. You know, go slide down the little slide now. That is an entirely new event here. Like, it is a dungeon. This game does that all the time, with these very bit moments in the original are now fully fleshed out things you can do. And that is uh, pretty much the reason why the game is, like, close to 40 hours, because it, it, everything that was very minuscule at the time it are now things you have to do just to mm-hmm. progress to the sector and even that area it's like they added some neat little touches to like the lore and the world building where it's like oh all the pollution from the plate goes right down into the slums they shoot the pollution down into the lower area which is like wow that's scummy <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> yeah there, there, there's that aspect but then also like oh they simulate daylight by having these lamps but they don't provide enough power to it <laughs> that was depressing we're learning that it's like got, well, they can't see sun but we can simulate the sun it's like this is the future this is our future <laughs> like, it like, really 20 is. Years. It's like this is depressing as hell like now more than ever like you don't really think about that when you're playing this game like 20 years ago I was like wow man it's evil corporations is gonna stick it to the man it's like it's kind of unrealistic but then you get back and you're older it's like wow man this is totally us in like five years what the fuck <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> it's just like wow uh, but yeah i mean it, it is all fleshed out and the only one i i'd say kind of wore down wore me down and i think it's mainly because i was something i was doing for a game explained video was the road to wall market where you have to deal with all those hands and solve those puzzles uh, with the broken up road which again was just a simple set piece and like no let's make those hands a puzzle i'm i'm, I'm on and off with it because at one, I want, on one hand Huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always was enamored by that hand in the original game. I was like, what is the I what is this hand? Like, what is this mm. doing here? It's like, is this part of the hell house? So that's what I originally thought. I was like, is this, is this part of like a down hell house? I was like, no. But apparently, I don't know, some developer's kid <laughs> looked at it and it's like, no, that's a really cool hand. We should probably do something with it. All right, fine. We'll go we'll grab it and move boxes. You like crane games, right? All right, here, go oh, fuck off. <laughs> Play the game. <laughs> you know? I, I, it wasn't so bad the first time, but I was going out of my way to get all of the dresses. Yeah. And so you have to replay that section every time in order to uh, see all of them. And by the end, it was like, oh, I, I know, I know what I'm doing. Just let me go <laughs> let me get through. <laughs> yeah. I get made me even more appreciate the fact when you return to that area and it's like, oh, yeah, all the ladders are already down. We don't have to do this puzzle again. Sweet. Just to fool around, I, I, I used the arm and I hovered it above Aerith and I started like trying to press it down on her. And she's like, Cloud, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Giving you these hands. <laughs> oh, what did you guys think of the like the other mini games that were incorporated to the game, like the the dart boards, the the, the gym stuff, whack a box. I guess I, 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 was, I was struggling on the yeah. name with it for a the bit. gym stuff yeah, made me want to blow a blood vessel. Okay, all right. I don't mean to be that guy. What was so hard about it? <laughs> because the only one I had trouble with was the very last one with Tifa, and that still only yeah. took me about a half hour. I love rhythm games. Like I I, I absolutely love rhythm games. I love the new squat stuff. Mm-hmm. And the the, the pull up part, I I got the jewels thing on my second try. I wish there was more of that, honestly, because that was that, that was a mm-hmm. my favorite mini game, and I, and I loved the fucking battle theme remix. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but like, like I'm probably gonna add, legit add that to my playlist whenever I decide to work out in ten years. I I didn't mind the squats; <laughs> it was just the pull ups because it kept changing what buttons in order you had to press. Very true. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's a little bit hard to get the the hang of the tempo. I found that sometimes. 
I would go faster just because I saw that Jules was going faster. And I was like, okay, yeah. I, I'm not going fast enough. I got to speed up. But then I'd stumble this and fall off. <laughs> this motherfucker's trying to flex. So I can flex too. <laughs> Every time he fell, it's just like, no. Like I got very lucky when I finally did win. Where I, I, he fell and then I got one more after him and then fell immediately. And he wasn't just able to get down, back like, in cloud, time. Cloud, hold him down. <laughs> Don't let him get up. <laughs> but um I, I like the whack a box mini game. I, I mm-hmm. did it did you overshoot the, the thirty thousand score at all? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, no, here's the thing. Like my first few attempts, I, I barely missed the 30k. So I figured, okay, fine, I'm gonna try this again. I found the proper strategies to do it. And then I win finally, but then I barely missed forty K. And that drove me insane. <laughs> so I kept redoing it just to break. 40. You don't get anything from it. It was just to satiate my own needs to break 40K. And uh, that's that's pretty much where I ended up. I, I forget what my final score was, but I did blow past 30,000 because I realized, oh, the strategy is build up uh, your ATB until you have Infinity's End and then go hit a 1500 one. And then you, you can break it. Oh, in one uh, go. I did not use Infinity's End at all. I used Triple Slash. I didn't think about using triple slash. I, I was basically using all my regular attacks on the smaller boxes, build up my ATB. And then like whenever I saw 1500 or two of them line up infinity's end and break through them. No issue. I'll think about that for next time. I just used braver and I just had punisher mode on the entire time, except when I needed to dodge roll to move faster. Oh my God. The fact that you can't target the boxes just drove me nuts because <laughs> yeah. if you don't, I said about mentioning triple slashes. The problem is, is that if you're not like, in the sweet spot of it, you slide past the damn thing. <laughs> and that's what I was afraid of. That's why I was all about Infinity's End, because you you know where you're going to hit. I just <laughs> wedged myself in there, and that was good. Though I will admit, and this, um, this is something I need to improve massively upon when I do my hard mode playthrough, uh, I did not use Cloud's Punisher mode barely at all. And it's because I forgot the instructions for it where i thought like i don't have to guard in order to do the uh counter attack i i thought it just automatically happened like a dumbass um, so <laughs> and so i'm looking at the uh, i'm thinking about playing hard mode or watching my old playthrough and, or and seeing the instructions and i'm like oh that would have made the shield guys way easier or whoa that would have made those the slippery guys that dodge everything way easier no i'm just brute forcing it <laughs> dodging behind him and then hitting him and then using fire it's a learning experience for everyone like i i lost count at the amount of things i've done wrong <laughs> in mm-hmm. this playthrough looking back again hell house or going into like other like yeah it was basically the, the human confrontations that i uh, i struggled a little bit with but there are also some boss fights that were kind of kicking my ass and it's like i know now what to do with them for next time it's like god that takes me back. <laughs> like, so hard, that was like, a, oh, that's the way it was. That's the way it was. It used to be it's like, you get your ass kicked and then you learn what, what not to do for next time. But it's like, you also don't, those are the moments you don't share on Twitter. So, hey guys, <laughs> this boss kicked my ass, but <laughs> <laughs> you don't brag about yeah, that. You don't, sort you don't of brag thing. about that sort of thing. I don't, I don't want to brag, but I lost to that guy like six times. <laughs> so I, I have something here that'll scare the hell out of you guys. Huh? Uh, because I talked to somebody who has played through all of hard mode already mm. and hell house has new attacks and hard mode. Oh, I've, I've done that. Oh, you have done it. Oh, okay. I didn't really realize you had gotten that far already. I've been going through hard mode a little bit since I beat the game and I just finished chapter eight, which has the hell house in it. And yeah, it is so much harder than it was in normal mode. <laughs> I, I heard he tosses out sleeping tonberries. They're not sleeping. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he tosses out three tonberries and they can still chef's knife you to kill you in one hit. Jesus. And considering you only have Cloud and Aerith, that's scary. Oh my god. I, see, I, I love and hate when games do that. It's like, uh, like what's what's hard mode like about? It's like, can't use items. Okay, what about? Well, enemy counters are also a little tougher, sure. Enemies also have brand new attacks. Oh, god damn. I want to see those attacks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, I've actually been considering uh, streaming me going through hard mode and showing. That, like, I was thinking the same thing, yeah. Let's have Get that, that prayer struggle. materia. Get that prayer materia. Get- <laughs> oh yeah, I did not use the prayer. I kept forgetting about the prayer prayer materia instead i had uh cure and magnify on Aerith. prayer became my 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 godsend throughout the whole playthrough because prayer doesn't use mp it's just one of those like atb abilities and doesn't actually use your mana so like sometimes i was just having Aerith hang out in the back shoot magic missiles while cloud was doing all the fighting and then when the whole gauge filled up prayer 
group heal. Everyone was fine. I was like, yeah. I, I, I love the strategy with that. And how long did it take you guys to figure out? I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't switch to my magic user when I want to use magic because they get hit. They're going to get interrupted and, well, buy MP and buy ATB. The thing I noticed was that every time I switched to a character, the enemy would target my player character. It was like all of a sudden they were going for my cloud, but then I turned into Aerith and now they're going for Aerith because they know the player is controlling Aerith. It was like, mm. they seem Cheater. to know who you're in control of. <laughs> Oh, they, they absolutely do. That's why you have to issue those commands or else you're screwed. You're going to lose that magic. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got the most out of tactical mode for doing that as well, specifically for Aerith, because uh, the one thing that kept irking me specifically, because see, in the original game, uh, it didn't matter what tier of spell you cast. When it was time for you to cast it, you casted it. This game brought back something I haven't seen since Final Fantasy IV. <laughs> where the strength of the spell also dictates the, the length of the casting time. Because yeah. if you choose Faraga or any of the tier threes, it takes a good three seconds for that spell to go off. And you are completely vulnerable while doing that. I thought it was, I thought, is my game hanging up? Like, it's like, it's like my, it's my, my, <laughs> my PS4 dying. I'm, I'm on this stance for a long time. But it's like, oh, it only happens for the Faragas and stuff. And it's like, I haven't seen that in so long, but that's something you have you have to think about because the, I mean oh, I barely used Faraga and Thundaga and all to that. To be fair, those spe- they hurt like big time. Oh, yeah. those, those spells really hurt. So they it is also worth it. suck down your MP. Yes, they do. And if you get interrupted, you still lose the MP. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I hate that stuff, but I understand. <laughs> it's like that's that's something you just have to incorporate into a, a future strategy. But I personally can't to me the spell should only count if it goes out of my hands <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually curious uh because one of the big sticking points of the original final fantasy 7 was how your player characters really weren't all that all that different from one another that is not the case here oh, no. they are extremely unique for the better uh, for the yes. better because i agree in the original game I mean, stat wise, you can kind of gauge what character is supposed to be what, but at the end of the day, I was like, "Wow, Cloud's just good at everything." <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, "Cloud should be everything at once. Give him all the sources." I was just gonna say that, like, the only real significant difference it felt like was like Barrett, Vincent, and Yuffie had ranged weapons, so they could hit some targets that others couldn't, and that was pretty much it. Like, you have Sid, who's supposed to be the Dragoon. And every time I think of a Dragoon from, like, Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy V, they have the jump feature so they can go off for, like, one turn and then, boom, land on someone. And he only has that as a limit break. He doesn't actually do that as a secondary command. It's not like Yuffie inherently has thief skills because she's a ninja, you know? So you always just kind of relied on the materia and just... Do I want a long range fighter like Barrett? Do I want this limit break like healing wind so I can get a group heal? That's all you're really thinking about. And you couldn't switch out cloud at all. So yeah, materia yeah. was pretty much how you made the character what they were because by default, everyone was, it was relatively homogenous with exception to cloud. You know, that's why I go on and make the joke like cloud is just better at everything because stat wise, he was pretty much the best at everything that is now inherently the stat wise there. People are more garnered to certain things like, Aerith is clearly the magic user. Tifa is clearly the hard-hitting monk. Barrett is long range and is well. Barrett personally for me was my long range tank. Like I, yeah. I, I oh, beefed yeah. up the HP of that son of a bitch big time, and he was uh, great for support. And Cloud swings that sword really hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get in there and do that damage. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I, I, I appreciate that because when when roles are more clearly defined, it allows you to again, properly strategize and think about how you're going to approach the next fight or how to deal with different circumstances when those characters are not immediately available. And uh, jumping ahead, way ahead here, it's like, why isn't Eric with me for this part? <laughs> it's like, you do start I, to miss I her. I gave you all the material. <laughs> yeah, the, the, at a point where you started getting all the characters, I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't, I wasn't worrying about putting material on this character and all of a sudden I have to use them. Crap, uh... <laughs> Let's get them a lowdown. Swing the stick. <laughs> Speaking of, I can't wait for Sid to actually have jump because Sahagans, holy crap, their jump is annoying. <laughs> <They> are, <laughs> first thing, let's just say this this game got a a major upgrade in terms of difficulty in, in terms of uh, in comparison to the original because I died quite a few times. Yeah, so did I. Oh yeah. To me, um, I, I start falling apart when there are more than like three or four enemies on screen at once. The one thing I love about the most about the battle system of this game. Is that when you're using when you're choosing abilities and spells, you go into bullet time, and that mm-hmm. gives me 
all the time in the world to think about like what's up and like even though it is very hectic at the moment everything is kicking my ass at the same time i have still maybe a minute before that bullet hits me before i choose cura <laughs> you know <laughs> and i i love that about this game but that said i still struggled <laughs> when there was three or four enemies at once my, i'm looking at my atb bar waiting for that thing to fill up they're blocking my attacks my barrett's not ready yet for uh Unger max that's what i call it anyway that's the original name for it and uh Aerith is unconscious what am i doing <laughs> you know it, it, it's, I, I, it's, it's easy to get flustered if you're not careful yeah i imagine you got pretty panicked when you were in the hojo's lab and had the six dogs attack you oh my god that rough Jesus. fuck that room i hated <laughs> that room so much well okay i'm glad i'm not the only one because oh no I'm, it kicked my ass a i'm few looking times. like i i died like six times there because okay six bloodhounds and i only got tifa and Aerith with me and it's like but they're kicking my ass so hard like why are they so fragile? But then I looked it up on Google. I was like, is anybody else struggling with this shit? And nobody's saying the same thing. Maybe because the game's not even a week old yet at this time. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, I can't be the only one, right? Why is nobody <laughs> mentioning this? Everybody's talking about the Hell House and Jewels. What about that room with the six bloodhounds? <laughs> <laughs> you just got a dive kick for days with Tifa. Oh, That's my God. I, uh, I, I ended up using... Um, it's the one where she... Uh, pretty much does like six attacks in a row. It's good for staggering. And yeah. I also used for uh, oh, yeah. uh, True Strike. Oh, True Strike is a godsend. I wish they implemented more of stuff like True Strike. Because like True Strike, when you uh, when someone is staggered, True Strike will like raise the stagger percentage, the multiplier, by like 30. And, and whenever I staggered someone, I would do two strike two times in a row if my ATB was filled up enough. And then it would like skyrocket someone from 160% to like 220%. And it was like, I wish they had more of that mechanic like in Final Fantasy 13, where like after you staggered him, the meta goal was to kind of raise the multiplier to make him go down even quicker and quicker. But the only thing I didn't like was that as soon as I hit those two true strikes with Tifa... As soon as he was at 220%, the bar was almost already cooled down, and then he recovers. And I was just like, ah, come on. Yeah, different enemies have different staggering lengths, I've noticed. Uh, one enemy in particular, I forgot the name of it. The staggering lasted less than two seconds. I was like, what? Uh, the ghosts, I think. The ghosts. I believe, yeah, what was it? yeah, I believe it was the ghosts. That only lasted like two seconds. I was like, oh, what the shit is this? <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, that was pointless. It's like, all right, here it comes. We're getting ready to stagger. All right, he's, he's pressured. He's going in there. All right, guys, full out assault. I got one overpower in. <laughs> all right. <laughs> let's do it again, I guess. Fuck this game. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm not huge on Final Fantasy 13, but at least I can say about 13 was that you could raise every enemy and boss up to like 999% if you really wanted to, you know? And, mm -hmm. that, and that was essential to getting five-star rankings because like the faster you could deal out damage, the higher the multiplier, the quicker the fights went by, even though they still were like four minutes, five, six minutes long, even at five stars. But God, that game's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. There is one thing about the battle mechanic that I admittedly didn't like so much because uh, the one thing a lot of uh, boss encounters specifically share is that they're broken up into phases. Once you reach a certain HP threshold, you can't do any more damage to them. And I've had a couple of times where I staggered them right before reaching that threshold, but I only did like 10 points of damage because it was just enough to bring them into the phase transition, and that's the staggered lost. And it's like, uh, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I got, I can top that one, one up, uh, cause I'll get him to that stagger and, oh, Hey, I have Tifa and cloud up to their limit break. Let's use both at the same time. and just lay on the damage. Yeah. Oh, they're going into the next phase and their attack, their limit break isn't doing crap to them. That's pretty much how the game sets you up. The, the game wants you to handle things. It's like you stagger them and then you lay out all the big damage. You got your limit breaks. Okay. Then general rule of thumb is nobody, nobody's agreed upon this, but I think we've signed a secret treaty. You don't, use the limits until they're staggered <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the problem is is that yeah you can have moments like that where they just brush it off because it's time for the boss to do its second phase thing and i didn't like that that is the thing about the battles that i legitimately don't like and i'm, I'm hoping in, in in future expansions or at the very least uh, i don't know i doubt they patch it out for this one even in this age of dlc that's something they, they ease up on for later 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or at least just let you keep the damage. Like, go into the transition if you want, but just, like, let the damage accumulate, and then they can do the transition, and the health will still be the same after the transition's over, you know? I mean, hey, they might fix it for the PS5 release, because, let's be honest, this thing's getting ported oh, to the PS5. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to buy it again. <laughs> oh, same. Because <laughs> I want to see, because, you know, we're all going to buy it. Like, day one on PS5, is like, all right, I got to see if they fix that apartment door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, all the weird low-res <laughs> textures or, and the very flat backgrounds that are in but you look a little closer and it's like hmm the flat backgrounds didn't bother me that much because i understand like yeah you can't render out midgar in real no. time not not the entire that's just not possible yeah. i i get it but at the same time there are some instances where it's like that's a wallpaper in the background <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was the most obvious for me when we were climbing up to the shinra hq because yes. you're seeing yes. the destroyed sector seven in the background and i go to look at it to take a screenshot because i want to admire its beauty the beauty of its destruction and it's like mm-hmm. that looks that's like a jpeg or something yeah. <laughs> it really is that's a matte painting <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> get out of here <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand. You can't fully render those models. It would just it'd be asking for way too much. But at the same time, it was it didn't bother me that much. The things that bothered me more was, and apparently it's a bug. Like it, it's supposed to be fixed later down the road, but it is a bug where certain things are just not loading the full res textures. I got to bring up the apartment door when you begin the game because that thing, it's not your eyes playing tricks on you. No, that, that apartment door is very low res and the texture is bugged out. Uh, so a lot of the flora and fauna have issues with texture loading at the moment, some ground textures. It, it's kind of all over the place in very sporadic bits. So it's not like the entire game is jank, but it is there. And when you notice it, it's really noticeable. But uh, apparently it is a bug and it's supposed to be fixed. But I don't know when. The may, only major bug, because I, you know, I can look over those type of graphical issues uh, that I encountered was in the Shinra building when you're climbing through the vents and you go to look in on other instances through the uh, grates. Uh, whenever I looked on those, it would not let me back out. Oh, I, I, I went to push circle and nothing happened. I could put every other button worked, but for some reason it wouldn't let me back out. And it did that for both vents. I had to reload my save both times. And uh, yeah, I, I was thankfully saved relatively soon. <laughs> I, I guess I guess in the context of the game, I was just really in the gossip. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm, <laughs> so I was just like, OK, we're leave. getting through. We're just going to ignore and keep on going. <laughs> I haven't had any real game breaking glitches at all during the entire playthrough. Um, just again, textures weren't loading in and it was just very blurry and washed out sometimes. But well, actually, I did cl- uh, clip one thing that happened and it's on my Twitter right now. But like I was fighting a monster and I, I I guess I pushed him so far out of bounds of where the fight begins that the fight just ends, even though the monster isn't dead. And so the monster just sort of like waddles off and just like, all right, I guess I've made my point. <laughs> yeah, let this be a lesson to you, you little prick. <laughs> <laughs> the closest I got to that was when uh, Tifa was in Corneo's wagon. Uh, heading off uh, when she went to sit back down her hair decided to go wild and just like flying all over the place <laughs> man I know it's the, uh, it's still we're not at that point yet but I, I still really wish there was, there was a better way of rendering hair <laughs> in yeah. like the, the game image because I did notice you probably won't notice it if you if you're playing on a lower resolution or some other shit but it's like because the game yearns for a, a slightly more realistic style than say Kingdom Hearts which I feel didn't suffer from this issue as much because it's more of its cartoon aesthetic but it's like uh, in in certain daylight or certain lighting the hair really sticks out it's like being so f- overly fuzzy and uh mm-hmm. i didn't really like that too much. again it's a small thing you don't really noticing it when you're getting hit in the ass with a fire spell but it, 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 every time like we zoom in on on, on like heart to heart conversations and cutscenes, I, I I can't help but notice that sort of thing but that's more of a me issue you probably won't be bothered by it at all I know the game, <laughs> again, this is a minor thing. You just have to do it because of the size of Midgar and the detail on everything. Boy, we had to squeeze through a lot of uh, oh, yeah, tight know. spaces. Man, and- they really love that shimmying animation <laughs> because they're getting their money's <laughs> worth. Yeah, you go through it a lot. I did think about that too. Like Loki, I did think about it. I was like, wow, they were, I'm shimmying through a lot of shit in this game. And mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't realize like, it's probably going to get worse than the sector falls <laughs> because I'm shimmying through everything in that one. But yeah, I did notice that too. It, it may be just a way for them to mask. Oh, it's load. definitely a load to hide low, loading. Yeah, load times. Uh, How did you guys enjoy the new take on summoning? I Granted, I did not play 15, so I did not reach the point where you could summon things. So I don't know if it's similar to that game at all no but i dug it oh okay (laughs) the summons in 15 were just uh a win button basically (laughs) oh whenever you activated them the fight was over so (laughs) 
not it's not a win button here, but it is definitely I got your back <laughs> sort of button mm-hmm. because yeah. you when you start seeing the summoning meter fill, it's like, oh thank God. My buddy Satan's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got my dragon come here to kick your ass. <laughs> For me, it feels very similar to how it was in Final Fantasy 12, where like you would summon out a monster in 12 and they would be a, a temporary party member that fought alongside you and did attacks like as the same time as you were. And when you died, they kind of went away and did their final move and that was that. I like them better in 7 Remake if only because you can actually use your own ATB gauge to direct commands to them to tell them to do things. And you know, they have that great devastating final move as they leave, which they didn't have in 12. Like when they when you died, the Esper left. That was it for them. But with 7 Remake, even if your character dies in the battle and you still have the other two party members left, Hellfire is going to happen. Tidal Wave is going to happen. You know, all of the summon big time hits are going to happen regardless. So I was happy with it. And they did a good job of balancing the more powerful summons by giving them, making you need two AT bar, TB bars bleh, to actually pull off some of their lesser moves. I think some people might not realize that at first. Like maybe they might think that like you summon in the monster and it'll just fight on its own. But no, you you got to give it commands. I mean, it will fight on its own, but you got to give it commands as well. Yeah, because I never gave my summons a command while while playing the game. Because when I when I summoned it for the first time, I realized it was doing things on its own. It's like, oh, okay, I'm assuming it's just doing things on its own. And when I saw the summon ability, I kind of I I think I m- might have misread one of the tool tips where the summon will do the ultimate attack before it leaves. But I miss I thought I remember reading that you can also choose to have the summon do the ultimate attack immediately. And that, that, that's what I thought summon ability was. Like, okay, maybe I don't want it to linger around too much. I can just call it to leave now. And I never use summon ability as a result of that. So now that I'm, I'm learning today, <laughs> again, oh, <okay. laughs> you're going to make mistakes on your first playthrough. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely going to make mistakes on your yeah. first playthrough. Now I know that you can command summons to do different things. That's great. Fuck me! I wish I knew that! <laughs> <laughs> the, the interesting thing with Bahamut that took me a little while to get because I had to actually pay attention to him is uh, his moves say that if he has this sort, certain aura around him, the moves you use will be much more effective. And I'm like, well, there's no thing here to actually have that aura pop up. And then I just happened to look at him once and like, oh, he's that, that glowing crap that he had around him when I fought him. <laughs> Before he, he uh, unleashes his ultimate attack, he starts having that. So you actually want to save it for a reason about the go so you can do much more powerful attacks with Bahamut unless you're just increasing your ATP, ATB like crazy. Which, by the way, I went to easy mode to get to get Bahamut because pff, screw that fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, yeah, if you guys want to fight the uh, super boss, which I attempted and got close to, uh, it's a gauntlet to actually get to it. And from what I understand, the super boss itself is not actually that hard in comparison But instead, your gauntlet includes a round against Shiva, a round against Fat Chocobo, a round against Leviathan, a a round against uh, Bahamut, who then at half health summons in Ifrit. (laughs) (laughs) Tag me out! (laughs) And then the super boss that you get to fight at the end. But no, Bahamut is the issue. So right now, what I've been trying, what I need to do is one, get all my abilities for all my weapons. Uh, which I also really enjoy that system, but also have materia so uh, one, I can survive the fight so I can save my reprieves for when he unleashes his mega flare because you're just not going to stagger him before he unle- he does his countdown. You need reprieve. So good luck with that, <laughs> Clement. And I'm going to be doing that on stream. I tried to do it before and I, I got close. I got to the Bahamut stage, but I, I couldn't beat Bahamut. You guys are just talking about all this, like these new counters. Like I, I, I just finished the game yesterday, but I'm, I'm itching to go back in. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's that's why I'm playing hard mode. I'm still like addicted to the gameplay and I just want to keep playing it because it's, it, you know, regardless of what I think about the ending and we're going to get to that, but. It is such a great, fantastic ride from start to finish. I, even the ending itself, like on a story level, I might not appreciate it, but on a gameplay level, it was fantastic. Like the motorcycle chase was amazing. I, I loved that they they turned the boss fight of like, uh, you know, the rolling robot that you fought at the bridge in the original. And now it's this thing where you're driving alongside it and taking out its wheels and dodging its flamethrower and all this stuff. It was just, oh, my Lord. Oh, God, it is so much fun. And it's 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 a gauntlet at the end. There are like even before that ending, there are like four or five bosses in a row that you're fighting and (laughs) it is relentless. It, it, It really does feel like a true finale to the whole thing. And 
I mean, even the sequence before you get on the bike is just amazing. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, it was, I was thinking about that, too, like constantly throughout the game where you know that it, this game is going to end after they leave Midgar. But think about the original story. The last thing you fight is that thing, that motorball <laughs> in the road. <laughs> and I was like, that's not really a final boss. It's like, but if you want this to be its own full fledged RPG, you got to have like the climactic moment. Mm-hmm. And how are they going to do that? And at first, I thought it was just going to be Genova. Like when I remember when one of those trailers dropped, it was like, oh, "We're fighting Genova here." <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. that, that. That originally that didn't happen until the the ship on the way to Costa de Sol. So okay, so maybe they're taking a few liberties with that. And they did a lot more than that. <laughs> 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 but uh, gameplay wise, I have to agree. It was a really fun battle. Again, I, I thought it was a little too hectic at points because again, you got you're, you're fighting three targets <laughs> along with this giant ass heartless in the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, this is Final Fantasy. That was a weapon. That's okay. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I, I didn't have too much trouble until the again freaking Bahamut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bahamut was usually the, the worst part of that fight. And if you die, you're all the way back. Fortunately, I did not, but I heard from other people. But yeah, you if you die during that fight, you're all the way to the very beginning of that entire sequence. Oh, God. We'll so hard mode's going to be rough. Skip cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the only thing about gameplay we didn't mention, I think, is how each weapon could stay viable. Oh, I love that. Game. That was, yeah. my, favorite th- that was yeah. my favorite thing about Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, I love that they, they brought that in here because, you know, they're there are folks that love the Buster Sword for its design, or my personal, the Hard Edge. I love, I mean, I love the Hard Edge since it's the original game, but they made it so long in this one. <laughs> 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 but uh, but I love the fact that you can upgrade the weapons to make them current with whatever you're doing, no matter what time and place. I appreciate that, like, it doesn't take long to get the skills proficiency uh, with certain weapons. So, like, if I don't want to use the Nail Bat because I don't like its... its uh, punisher attack like where he actually winds up and swings it like a baseball yeah. bat. <laughs> I know. it's like wow wow they gave cloud his joke weapon already that didn't take long <laughs> but i was waiting for Aerith's broom <laughs> <laughs> but you actually get your skills fairly quickly if you just spam them in like one or two fights and then once i got the ability i could just switch to the weapons i wanted to use and the other thing i like is that every time you got skill points it went into every single weapon. So you didn't have to use a weapon for it to get good for to like compare with the other weapons to be like, huh, is the Buster Sword good compared to the Hard Edge? Is it good compared to the Mithril Blade? It's like, no, it's like you get skill points for everything and then you can allocate those points evenly and then judge from the, where the points are at this point in time and be like, I think I'm going to use the Hard Edge now, you know? The weapons are still clearly like skewed towards a certain play style. Like there's the Magic Sword, there's the Attack Sword, there's the Balance Sword. I, I'm all, with Cloud, for my playthrough, I was all about physical attacks, which I primarily stood with the Hard Edge. But with, with Tifa specifically, you get like like the Metal Gloves, I think it was. Like, I think that's her second weapon in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's her strongest one. Like, just in terms of raw attack value, it's the strongest one. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I wanted her to be my, my hard heading one for a side and really left it. But, you know, at the same time, I have to agree, I loved that I can allocate the other skill points to other weapons all at the same time so that uh, I get a new weapon. I see the new ability. I see one thing, another thing I love is that when you are highlighting the weapon, you get to see what the special ability is in like this little demo window on the right to see exactly what you're doing. So you don't have to necessarily have to try it out yourself at once, but you get an idea of how it works. And uh, I looked at it, I was like, oh, that attack looks really cool. Looks really helpful. So I think I will switch over to this temporarily. And I don't have to worry about my attack being weak because I can just allocate these skill points to make it maybe not as strong as the metal knuckles, but still pretty good at this point in time. And I don't feel so bad about, you know, trying to learn all these skills. Another thing that I love about that is that it, this game does the Final Fantasy IX thing where once you learn a skill, it's yours. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about holding on. You don't need to have a certain weapon equipped to use that specific ability. It is yours forever. I love that. <laughs> Again, for oh, RPGs, so the, our, all, all RPGs need that. Please. Yeah. Even better is once you finally get uh, to the you know your max level and get the uh, weapon level up to I think it's six. Every you you can have every single weapon be six slots, two connected, each two connected. What did you guys think of the materia system? I really like. I love it. It, it. it again. It wasn't that different from the original, and that and I loved the materia system in the original game. Like the only thing that felt different was that when you master the materia, they don't spawn a clone duplicate. Like yeah, they, they don't, don't have babies. 
Yeah, they don't have babies. <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, you know, they still had like the pairing system where like you pair it up with Magnify and you can do a group healing, a group protecting group, whatever you want to do. You know, you still had like you could attach elemental stuff to your weapon. So if you're at Abzu and you know he's weak to fire and you want to be a little bit more effective against him, fire plus magnify, boom. Now I'm going to be hitting his weakness the entire fight. You still got like enemy skills and you got thievery and you can still steal in battles and stuff. <laughs> no, no, when I got the enemy skill for the first time, I was like, no. But then there's only four <laughs> enemy skills. <laughs> oh, I see. I didn't know. I got two of them but just by playing the game. I think it was like the uh, energy siphon and self-destruct. I don't remember how I learned that one. Yeah. But uh, I, one of the enemies blows up on you. Okay. That's, that's, okay. That's okay. It. Just a little thing then. I think it was a small grid that blows up I'll on you. I hated yeah, those man. assholes. <laughs> oh yeah. The thing was, the thing was, when the fight ends, like Cloud takes his time to un- to sheath his sword and kind of stand there, and I'm not really paying attention. <laughs> no, but, it's, yeah. but it's also pretty inconsistent, though. Again, this is a small thing, but the the the, the, the damn green tube thing—I forgot their names. It doesn't always happen, but they might self-destruct when they die. But it's like. The sweepers explode when you kill them, and it doesn't hurt you. <laughs> these enemies explode, and it doesn't hurt you. Why are these the exceptions? Like, what, I, the, what the shit is that about? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. But I forget what the third enemy skill is, but I do know the fourth you have to get from Malboro. You get bad breath. Oh, God. Oh, boy. All right. Never getting it. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know, if you want to take on the super boss, you got to beat Malboro. All right. Which, I'm honestly, getting it. <laughs> he's, not, he's not that bad. Honestly, didn't have that hard of a, tr- a time with it. God, though, the enemy skill, it's like, oh, God, it begins. <laughs> it's like, now I'm going to have to play every chapter again to see what I can learn. But you tell me, but you tell me there's only four. Yeah, there's okay. only four. And if you assess everything in the assessment, they'll say enemy skill can be learned. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember one of my first thoughts about the material system when I was first introduced to it is like, I'm equipping these things and I'm, I'm seeing the buffs to my, my magic and my magic defense. No detriments, though. I, and I find that, God. I mean, that's not a bad thing, <laughs> necessarily. Like, oh, I, I, I'm so happy with that. <laughs> you know, because those things that you had to, well, you didn't have to consider too much because 7 wasn't really a hard game. That was something you did have to consider. It was like, if you're going to make this a primary magic user, okay, they're, they're going to be dishing out the attack, but their HP is going to be pretty low because of all the damn deductions. But that they got rid of it entirely for this one. Yeah. You can only, your, your magic stat only goes up by having a lot of materia. And uh, I welcome it. I really did enjoy it because I feel it encourages players to really see what you can do with the new, every material that you're given. And you're given a lot of material in this game and some of you just pick up on the, the floor. I, I much appreciate that. It's very welcoming to new players and very rewarding and a nice, pleasant surprise for veterans. It encourages repeated playthroughs, too, because when you beat the game... You get double experience and double AP for your materia so you can level it up faster. And one of the other materials you get, I forget where I found it, but it was like uh, the step materia. And if you have if once you walk 5000 steps, something will happen with this one. Well, you do that and it becomes a new blue materia that's basically AP up. So any materia attached to it gets even more AP. So you can power level some of these things if you have. That Thanks for the up. tip. Yeah, I honestly thought the game was vain enough to have a Fitbit materia. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently no it actually transforms into something else okay i'll have to, I'll have to look no I, I saw like okay five thousand I, I gotta see what this does so <laughs> i did it <laughs> so i ran it so yeah so anyway i start running in circles <laughs> <laughs> oh no that was during uh what was it chapter 14 like when you're doing all the last sub side quests before you climb up to the shinra building so i'm like perfect I forego the chocobo service just run uh, you know what i should uh, yeah you know what because i decided to climb the stairs for the shinder hq because i had to i think you oh i did to. both <laughs> you have to have the pedometer <laughs> material for that. <laughs> well, damn it i didn't think about that <laughs> that's perfect oh god they did so well with both i actually like both i of course the stairs are better but they they made the elevator fun too. No, I, I did not do the elevator this time because I always I, I've been wanting to see how they will handle the stair section since the remake was a, just even a dot. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, man, I, I, everything was talking about like like one wing angel. Like, yeah, but how are they gonna handle the shinra stairs? Because <laughs> I, I, I would my favorite. Well, it's probably one of my favorite parts of the game. It's climbing fifty nine stairs, <laughs> like set of stairs, <laughs> and you climb them. You climb them like the entire thing, and you slow down. Like after <laughs> yeah, four thirty, they get tired. The music starts getting warbled because <laughs> yeah, you're fatigued. Excellent, and uh, you really couldn't have made it any better. I, I'm so happy the way it was handled. There's just so many mm. things I couldn't believe still made it into the game. You know, because like I don't know, I was so. I just felt like modern Square Enix was going to be like, no, nah, we're not going to include this thing. We're not going to include this thing because that was too goofy. That was too weird. No, Cloud still cross-dresses in this game. 
<laughs> no, we still climb the stairs. We still do all of these things. It's we amazing. still have the random store that shoots a machine gun at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went all out with the honeybee in some <laughs> oh, And I like, love it. I am I love so, it so happy much. about it. At the same time, kind of miffed about one thing because I know it's great that they kept the cross dressing in. They had to please uh, Don Corneo and all that. But when could Cloud bust a move? <laughs> you know? I love how even earlier during Sector 5 when they're like getting caught by Shinra, Cloud's like, I don't dance. Yeah, don't dance. <laughs> Bullshit, motherfucker. That's a, that's a Zach memory you're thinking of. But it's like he starts busting. I'm caught off guard with that first. And then there's the sequence where you're dancing with his name, Andrea, I think it was. Andrea, yeah. And he's... You got to time the button presses, but it's like, but I want to watch Cloud. <laughs> I can't pay attention to him dancing because I got to hit these button prompts on time. And it's like, I have to go back and watch it on a YouTube clip or some other shit because I was enthralled by, who is this? <laughs> it's like, this isn't Cloud. Why does he yeah. suddenly dance? Someone put it best when they said the wall market is basically when Final Fantasy becomes Yakuza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard that from quite a few people. <laughs> I uh, honestly, they added more to it. The whole massage sequence, like, let's be honest, we all paid three thousand, right, for our first. No, time I paid one hundred because I didn't. I didn't want to waste the bill. Yeah, it's like, I didn't, oh no, I, so maybe, oh, maybe, okay, no, maybe if you load the file beforehand, maybe. No, but. no, no, you got it. Uh, no, I, I, well, I saw all three, but I paid three thousand, and I, because I was like, I gotta see what happens, and <laughs> I'm not even gonna describe it to you guys. You have to watch it. I have a video on the channel <laughs> if you want to see it yourself. I thought it was. I thought it was one of those things. Like, it doesn't really matter. Cloud's always gonna look like he got out of a really furious masturbation session no but, it's very different like, no I, I didn't pay the top dollar for that one because i oh for, I, I didn't have much gill on me <laughs> i didn't have three thousand yeah i agree yeah oh no i was i was saving my money because i was i didn't know what was coming up but i'm in walmart and i want to be able to spend th- money on things and i just had enough oh it's wild it's i let's put it this way when I put that video showing all uh, versions of that hand massage, we got flagged for content. Oh. <laughs> for, for, uh, yeah, it, it is uh, flagged for like lewd content, I believe it is how it's put. Uh, however, that YouTube puts it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, now I got to put her. We're we'll stopping the conversation now. <laughs> got to load it up now. But yeah, they go all in. I love okay. the other thing you guys might not know is because uh, I had to do these guy th- things. You might have missed two uh, side quests, depending on your choices in Wall Market. So here's the question. Did you get the one where you go for uh, did you where you got a list of things to do from Sam or from Madam M when you played? Uh, when I first played, I got Chocobo Sam. Um, but when I did hard mode, I did start choosing alternate dialogue and I did get Madam M the second time. So yeah. Uh, for what specifically? Well, I, it's like how much you spend on the, um, massage, how much, uh, what you say to Sam when you do the coin toss. Another big thing is if you talk to Johnny or not, like he'll run off and like, if you talk to him and I think it'll trigger some things. So you have to ignore Johnny in that whole thing and just head right for Don Corneo. I'm assuming this, this updates your quest list because yes, it, there's two different quests. One, you get on one path, uh, one set you get on one path and one set you get on path, other path. You always get the stuff at the gym, but one will be, if you get Sam, uh, you'll have to go in and fight a bomb. Okay. No, I did not do that. You got the one from Adam M where you fought at the modded out sweeper and did it. Uh, what was the other one that you got? Uh, you had to help the angel, of the slums. Yeah. Help the angel, of the slums. Yeah. So John, another thing you have to look forward to when you replay this and yeah. get those alternate choices is to get all the quests because that it, it counts these as doing all the quests you fight a bomb in the arena the other one you get the sauce quest oh yeah <laughs> intact completely intact yep. as it was in the original oh my god so it is you if you were worried about that not being in there it is in there Oh my god! Because I, I heard inklings of like hidden quests in the game on the wall market section, but then I looked at my quest list and it said I did them all. Mm-hmm. Like there were no green question marks. Again, another thing I love about the game is that it keeps track of your quests and 
ones that you can potentially unlock. I did them all. I didn't. I thought I'd, I'd seen everything, but apparently not. God, I love this mm. game. <laughs> this game is yeah. so good. Yeah, the chapter select and redoing things, it's, a, it's like there are so many choices that affect things in this game. Like, do you guys know how to get the alternate dresses for everybody? For Aerith, I do. For Tifa, well, Tifa is probably when she asks you what kind of dress she wants. Yes, that, like that, that is where you get apartment. Tifas. Okay. Aerith, I know that if you don't do any, it depends on how many quests you do in this with the wall market. Mm-hmm. And if you don't do any of them, you get like this cheap, Kmart dress, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and and Madam M's like, uh, you know, what comes, you know, you know, you didn't help people, so you know what's, you know, what comes around goes around. <laughs> so yeah, if you skip out on quest, you'll be punished by the game. It's like, well, screw you. Here's a shitty dress for Aerith, and I love when you go up in the Kmart dress because like dogs are barking at her, and <laughs> cats falling. Oh my god, That's like, awesome. I, I, I'll put it this way: I've never felt more sorry for Aerith, and I know what I'm saying there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The thing I like about Seven Remake is that it did bring back all of like the choice systems where like you would be in a conversation and then all of a sudden you get to choose what he says and it can change scenes like later. Like I know that like um, before you go to uh, Midgar headquarters, it's like chapter 14, you can interact with a different person in Aerith's garden. So like I interacted with Tifa my first playthrough, but then I started uh, playing around with it and I found that like all of a sudden Cloud had a dream about Aerith. Instead of interacting with Tifa. Oh. And there's a different scene. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. They have, they basically have the date. And I, I think that's how it's going to go is like, uh, if you do more with Tifa, I think you get Tifa if you do more with Aerith. Cause is that how you did it? You focus a little bit more on Aerith this time? Like, yeah. Choosing yeah. her with the, uh, with after <laughs> I, I knew, I knew from the big get go of the Abzu sewer se- system that like when you get up and there's Tifa lying there and Aerith lying on the other side, I'm like, okay, this is a choice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I think you can maybe you can ignore both because the third one has to be Barrett. And I haven't talked to anybody who has had Barrett yet. <laughs> Just do a 180. <laughs> I was like, I wonder how Barrett's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I heard the Aerith one is extremely interesting because she's like tells Cloud, don't fall in love with her. Yeah. Which I need I want to see that scene so badly. Oh, God. <laughs> but I don't want to go play through. I, I don't know if I want to do three playthroughs, especially because I did chapter five, uh, or no, chapter three, chapter seven and chapter eight, three times over just to show off all the dresses. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I got the Aerith scene pretty easily because I was just going through the chapter selection after the game was over. I started playing a, a little bit of sector uh, seven, chapter three, and then I, I just jumped around and I wanted to see what kind of limit breaks I could get from the Coliseum, but I had to go to chapter 14 because that's the only time you could play as Tifa and Barrett for that section. So I just cut to it and I'm just going through the scenes and all of a sudden I realized, wait, this scene's different. That's not Tifa. What, what, what's going on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and those moments take you by com- complete surprise and uh, I, I really does make the game super replayable. Which is all you could really ask for when it comes to an RPG. The length of the game already, in a way, is encourages that that you'll be playing for a long time. But you always want to go back to it. You always want to have more than enough reason to go back to it. I mean, besides the game being fun, it's more than just the combat system. It's more about just the gameplay in general. It's more about the story and the character moments that want to bring you back. And uh, I guess on that note, I mean, do we besides going into probably the the bulk of this conversation (laughs) character moments uh characterization what did you guys think personally they nailed pretty much everybody because again my underlying fear heading into it because listen i have i I don't have much against the man i know uh tetsuya nomura is a fine enough dude probably tips the waitress well (laughs) but (laughs) uh you guys watch my kingdom hearts videos know that i don't think highly of him as a director or as a writer, because I feel he just makes shit, he makes shit up as he goes along, without really thinking about what it means in the end, until he's put on the spot. And when I learned that he was directing this, I was af- I was afraid because I thought having children, everyone's going to have having children personalities, and that's not how the characters were in the original mm-hmm. game. That's not the case here. Like everybody yeah. is pretty much the way they were in the in the in the PS one game. And I love it. Aerith was probably my big sticking point because after the original game, she sort of became this overly pure messiah-like character. Mm-hmm. And they kind of sucked the fun out of her. Crisis Core brought it back a little bit, but not 
the way I would want it to here. She's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Yeah. I think she's fantastic. Yeah. I, I've said this multiple times, but the thing that just immediately sold me on her was when you're walking across the rooftops and she's climbing up that ladder and she's like, I'm not some princess that needs to be taken care of. The ladder breaks. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> it just jumps <laughs> up. <laughs> it's like, oh, sweet. They're letting Aerith swear. She doesn't swear much, but it's like, I'm all about this. I loved her snarky little jokes uh, regarding the hedgehog pies because it's like, oh, they only go after the weaker prey. Oh, so they're going to be going after you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, uh, you know, he'll be like, uh, watch my back uh, or stay behind me. It's like, cool, I'll watch your back. <laughs> Something like that. Like Cloud is constantly trying to put her in. I'll protect you. And she's like, no, <laughs> I got this. It was uh, it was just refreshing. I, I couldn't believe it. I was. Yeah, I, again, was expecting just like they've made the graphics to look like Advent children and stuff. They're probably going to do something bad with the characters, but they were funny and they were like charming and endearing. And I, I really loved Cloud's gradual growth from being a, a prick into like embracing this community and actually wanting to help people. There's this great side quest where in Sector 5, you have to help all these children because there's a monster in their hideout and they, they don't want the adults to know about the hideout because then they're going to lose it. And Cloud at first, he's like, look, I'm a mercenary, you know, unless you're going to pay me, I'm not going to do it. And then they, they start like, you know, crying about their situation and crying like, oh, this is this is horrible. And Cloud kind of has a change of heart and he goes, OK, three gil. I have a special I have a special discount for taking out hedgehog pies. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah it is super adorable when he rescued those kids and they're all like, you know, cloud, cloud. I mean, you know, is it like more like this? I want to be a soldier. Then seeing all the kids have buster swords like out of cardboard or wood or oh, yeah. whatever. We, I think we all talked about this when the demo came out, but I love that moment where the walkway falls apart and then Cloud leaps all the way to the top. Jesse's like, whoa, that was cool. And Cloud gives this little look like that little yeah. smile. I mm. love that fucking smile. Because yeah. That right there is like that. That's who Cloud really is. Like at the end of the day, that's why he went to join Shinra or a soldier. I mean, he didn't get it, but his idea was that I want to become a cool, I want to become a cool war hero like Sephiroth. And for someone to genuinely compliment him for doing something, you know, technically impossible. For the <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that was, that, that was super hardcore. <laughs> you know? Hey, you, you see the crap third, uh, third class soldier like Roche pulls off. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But yeah, the the characterizations were just on point for every single one of them. Uh, I I loved them to death. Uh, I mean, I'm a big Tifa guy, but I I think T uh, Aerith was a bit more charming. Tifa's still a lot of fun here. I like her sassy personality, but and it was also interesting her, having her kind of waver on the whole terrorism aspect. But I I feel like you got a lot more out of her personality in this one than you ever did in the original. I loved how they they highlighted and amped up Barrett's like preacher qualities which yeah. to me makes a lot of sense given that he is trying to have people embrace their hatred against shinra and like it, it hits you as early as the sector eight raid when he's like talking about the planet crying when it's dying is like while you eat while you sleep while you shit it's like <laughs> and he like he, he's coming off as like like a protester but he like, like like you know like in the dark when no one's watching he practices these speeches to himself because he has to show off that that confidence and one of my favorite things about that how you know that it's mostly just him amping it up just for the sake of like getting people behind him but there's a brief very brief moment where after the the reactor blows up and cloud jumps back into the train where barrett's weaker side shows up well his 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 more humanizing side shows like i, I thought we lost you and they're taken aback by that real quick. I was like, what? <laughs> and, but then he like immediately like turns it over. It's like, uh, I mean, fuck you, Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, he did make that big thing about like all your, you know, your concerns, your worries, and even your pay. I will bear all of that. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, so you understand why Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse are all following this guy. Why he's just so charismatic and like, yeah, this guy makes sense. We should follow this dude. <laughs> yeah. How many times did you ever like, is Barrett going to just murder somebody on a train? Some <laughs> oh, <point>? my God. Because <laughs> those were kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> I love that they brought the Shinra suit guy back. <laughs> yeah, he was a kind of he because he was kind of a character that stuck out in the original game. And it's you, you have to put some emphasis on him just for the sake of giving Barrett more character moments. I, I, even though we don't get to see him a lot, love the characterization of Red 13. Obviously, couldn't control him just because there's so little game for him to be, be, be controllable in. But just having him there 
curing you on, on occasion, helping out. It's really cool. Got to make some use out of him. That damn smile he gives Barrett while, when they're oh, in the truck. That <laughs> scene Love that. is amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Barry ah. and Red 13 had some of the best banter in those last two hours. Mm-hmm. The sack of shit line in the van. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I thought that was probably the best one. I'm a little disappointed that we couldn't get fully playable Red 13. I know the argument is that given where he's introduced, there's not much of the game left. However, my counter to that would be this game had no problem fleshing out other parts of the game to make them hours long. You could have done something a little more to justify us having a fully playable Red 13. Not to mention, there are VR simulations. You can have Red 13 mm. playing those, you know, those those two. <laughs> I don't know, because I like to imagine Red 13 with a VR over his head. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the little detail that is it's his leash that holds the materia. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. No, I, I, I was kind of hoping they had like materia fillings for his teeth. <laughs> what's going on with the light show in your mouth <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> you radiact <laughs> hojo you're gonna pay <laughs> yes. oh man that just that just reminds me of all the the shinra heads oh. uh, by the way i had no idea until the credits that heidegger was john dimaggio usually i, I, could pick I heard out DiMaggio it slightly like, I, I had doubts i didn't look it up because that's the coward's way of doing things I was like but i heard it, i heard it in my voice i was like is that john dimaggio because like, that sounds like john DiMaggio. i love john dimaggio oh he's so good but I, he you he, he had it so much gruffer than usual it's like just give me a give me give me a waka ya come on come on just say it for me once <laughs> <laughs> you're going to die you sewer rats yeah yeah oh, there yeah. He is. oh that is john dimaggio <laughs> <laughs> why is heidegger telling me to bite his shiny metal ass <laughs> i want him to say that when he's in his in the, in the prod clod or proud clod yeah i have to agree all the shinri execs have gotten such better treatment and i, I loved every single one of them their person I, I think uh personally i would have liked a little more scarlet because we don't get to see much of her compared to Heidegger. I th- uh, no, I get Palmer gets the short end of the stick too. Well, then Palmer didn't mount to much in the original. Yeah, and- he, I mean, he gets killed off in disc one. Yeah. <laughs> I love that because in the original game, in the Honeybee Inn, when you go to oh, yeah. look in the side rooms, they do something interesting with President Shinra where he's like dressed up like a king and he's got this damsel in distress fantasy that he's playing out. And there's like this guy who's just like... Uh, sir, should we tell the president we got to move on? You know? yeah, it's like, what is this shit? <laughs> yeah, they got rid. Of, they got rid of it. Yeah, they replaced it with Palmer. It's like I, I can understand why they wouldn't want to do it with the president, just because he's the big bad of the game, and it might be a little jarring for him to be. <laughs> That's like, why I liked it. <laughs> it's like in this downside, this motherfucker cosplays as a king, <laughs> trying to do all these these prophecies and shit. Oh man! By by the way, how how confused do you think people who are playing this game for the first time? are when they uh when the uh, sector seven plate fell and here's kate sith running up and just like like i get it it's great to see kate sith and of course we get a lot of reeve in this but it's like i can just imagine people going like what the fuck's up with the cat it's like what the fuck was that about <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of bleeding into the ending part where it starts it starts inferring that you should have played the original to know what's going on about these events you know yeah mm. Um, that's kind of one thing I don't like about the ending because I, I didn't like that whole Sector 7. Like the CG was cool, but I just thought like I liked the original better because one, Kate Sith wasn't there. There was a, a like a drop in music and like this, oh boy, when the plate's like about to fall on the people. And then it cuts to uh, Shinra at the top and it like goes into like opera opera music. And you just see like how cold and just like he, it's not even phasing him. He doesn't even care. Yeah. Mm. Uh, whereas this one, it kind of ended a little too quickly. The CG, it's sort of just like action music and dun, 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 it crashes <laughs> and then the scene's over and i'm just like eh, it was a little better than the original i mean that kind of goes oh, we're, we're we're getting there <laughs> we're getting that ending. but this kind of goes into how this game plays things a little differently in both a storyline sense and in a meta sense where the the plate falling while still tragic does not have as much impact as it did in the original game because there are measures taken to soften the blow, although it's still implied that a lot of people died. Mm-hmm. It yeah. doesn't feel as bad as it did in the original game because there is no focus on getting people out. It yeah. is just like, send Eric to get Marlene. Everybody needs to get out. Okay, let's go 
upgrade the pillar and that's it. The sector's already condemned. We can't do anything for these people. We have to at least try and stop it first. That's more important. You fail, the plate falls, everybody dies. But this game handles that differently. And I... Oh, God. <laughs> on, on, on one level, I really like it because that section where you're playing as Aerith, trying to get to Marlene, trying to get people out, you could feel the desperation of that moment. Yeah. You could, you know what's coming. Yeah, I like that we actually get to see that scene because it was only like alluded to in the original was that Aerith found Marlene and ran into Sen. Uh, but in this time, we actually get to see it. We actually get to see her meet Marlene in the bar and then Sen shows up and you've been on a merry chase, Aerith. I mm. originally thought that's what the whole reasoning for, again, because now we're getting into where the game kind of deviates. Because in the original game, when the pillar is being attacked, this is where Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse die. And the first casualty is Wedge, because he falls from the top, and well, close to the top, and he just dies from his injuries. In this game, he lives, and he, he survives that encounter, and then he's kind of the reason why Aerith knows where to go in Sector 7. Because I always thought that was a little weird, because, like, Aerith, can you go to 7th Heaven and Sector 7 to see, get rescue this little girl in Marlene? And Aerith just goes about her merry way, but it's also like, but how does she know where it's at? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like where, where does she know to go? Like, I, I think it said it earlier in the game that she's been to a couple of the sectors, I'm not sure. But I, I, it was a little detail that I didn't really think about until now. But at first, I thought that's why they kept Wedge alive. It was like, okay, she's going to help her guide era to the bar and then he's gonna die <laughs> you know because <laughs> which technically you think at first yes like in this it was kind of awkward at first because like in the cg cutscene where the plate's falling it just cuts to like a wedge being surrounded by the whispers being like oh blah, and he looks up and the plate's falling i'm like oh that's a weird way to kill him yeah i was so yeah. weird because like oh they're, they're gonna do something different like where wedge is actually he's gonna survive he's gonna hang on for a little longer it's like no he's gonna fucking die he's gonna get looking for his cats <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's so fucking lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, taking care of his But cats. that's not what ends up happening. But I, don't know, I really want to get into that. Yeah, but yeah exactly. How do, how do we really broach this? Because there's so many differences. Like one of the big ones to me was like, what the, sh what the shit is this? Especially when it comes to the, the whispers at the plate. They succeed in stopping Reno and Rude. Tifa's at the panel and then the whispers in, intervene and Rude is able to have, have it still happen. And I'm like, what is up with these damn things? And those are like before the game came out, my big thought was, oh, they're the ghosts of people who had like had their part of the live stream sucked up through the Mako and processed by Shinra. That's why Aerith can see them. And OK, she touches Cloud and transfers the ability and that's why he can see them. Uh, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. Whispers are thanks to Red 13's exposition. Let's dive into it is. Uh, their fate, their course correcting. I don't, don't want to dive into it. <laughs> okay, when I first heard this, I was like, "What, what is happening?" <laughs> and think, thinking back to all the things, like, "Oh, they're going that method." I don't know about this because there's definitely a lot of conflicting things. Where at first you think they're attacking you all the time because like they're go they're surrounding Aerith and they're they're attacking Jesse's ankle and all this other stuff. But then you get to the church and they save her from falling off the balcony, and I'm like. Well, why are they doing that? <laughs> I mean, and that's, I mean, that's all deliberate. It's just to make you question the building up the mystery as yeah. to what these entities are. But by the halfway point, I'm getting annoyed because these fuckers are in the way of shit that, I mean, but that's the entire point. That's why I can't, mm -hmm. I can't hate it too much because I understand like when you especially learn what their purpose is, I, <laughs> but even that even with that explanation of what their purpose is i'm just thinking to myself so why is it going differently now why is it changing that the whispers feel the need to intervene because i'm just gonna say it because we're, we're in spoiler territory yeah born. exactly if we're trying to deviate from the original timeline the original what happened in the original game it's like well then the plate's gonna fall because it always fell they reno always got to push the button so why now are cloud tifa and barrett able to stop reno and rude what's changing that the whispers need to intervene and i i think the answer to that and this is we're going we're going to have some major fan speculation when it comes to this i think it's sephiroth because yes. right from the very beginning it isn't zach communicating with cloud you see he sees a black feather and then he Sephiroth keeps popping up and telling talking to Cloud. And this is a different Sephiroth 
for the most part, from the one that kidnaps Genova. I'm pretty sure that's what they're going for. I here. think so too. What's happening here, and again, this is all speculation, but it's what a lot of people are taking it from is that this is Sephiroth from a future. I'm not sure if it's the original future, but this is Sephiroth from the future traveling back and subtly influencing things to go have things differently. Because, you know, everyone knows the butterfly effect, where mm-hmm. even the smallest change can have the biggest impacts. And I'm thinking because Sephiroth went back in time to the original thing and started doing things a little differently, that's what's causing all the shit to go slightly different at first. But then it gets out of control by the end <laughs> of it. And that's why these arbiters of fate show up in the numbers that they do. It's a lot to take in at once because yeah. my first thought was like, Nomura, stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is you're supposed to be a remake of the original game. What is this shit you're doing? Get the Dementors out of here. I yeah. don't need them to be here. But then you read into it in a meta sense how these guys are really us. If you think about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. How they only show up when things deviate from the original timeline and they're there to make sure things stay on the corrected path as we would. <laughs> they <laughs> are the fans. They are the fans. They are they the fans. Are the fans. <laughs> First off, fuck you. I can't even wear a robe that size. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's a remake that knows it's a remake. And I don't know if Sephiroth is going back to the past or just going to an alternate universe. Who knows with that, with that kind of thing. I, I, say, I say past because there are lines in this that wouldn't make sense if it was an alternate universe or some other shit yeah like especially when the when the plate falls and cloud has another interaction with Sephiroth and he goes so you failed again did you mm, that's true yeah I, I i'm really looking forward to the hard mode playthrough and looking at those cues uh and seeing how they change and that was the other thing that was kind of weird and like before i knew what the whispers were all about was just like you meet Aerith, and cloud just like has a flash of her dying from the original game Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he has a flash of the Forgotten City segment. And I'm like, what are you doing, game? Yeah, they really want to show those moments as soon as possible. Why would you see that? <laughs> that was a that was a that was a red flag for me, uh, among a couple of other things. To me, the the one line and this is really late into the game that said something's happening like this is this is going to be really, really different is when you're fighting the Harbinger and in that boss fight, when you deal enough damage, it starts sending you flash forwards. And they're questioning, what was that about? And then Red 13 drops. This is our future if we fail here today. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> no. <laughs> that yeah. is supposed to, that's what's supposed to happen. What are you talking about? <laughs> and And this is why I can't be too mad at the ending because, yeah, we're not getting exactly what we had before but we're getting something uniquely different and changing up what we think we know about final fantasy 7 and it's kind of brilliant in a way because the original is still there to enjoy that's kind of the whole point of this is like yeah there's the original play it enjoy it it's no different but if you want something a little different and going into some wildly new ideas we have this and with them defeating fate at the end of this I am much more excited for the rest of the series because either it's going to be a freaking train wreck if they can't get the writing right. Uh, who knows how it's going to turn out? Or we could have some truly brilliant writing where they change up exactly what we think is going to happen. This might just all be an elaborate excuse to let let Aerith live. After all those forums, all those cheats about this is how you let Aerith live, they finally do it. And that is so fascinating. Not just Aerith. Zack. Yes, because Zach yeah. has survived. That is the other big thing about this ending that, again, it's like I play Crisis Core. I know how this scene goes. Like, as the first thought, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, Crisis Core. I remember that game, too. And if this is your first time playing Final Fantasy VII, you're like, who's, who's that? that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Who the heck is Zach? But then it shows that one scene where he's like, is that all of them? And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and what does that mean and they do something subtle where like this plastic bag with stamp flies by and it's a different breed of dog compared to what it is normally what is that about though because because <laughs> why would that influence the design of stamp though is like is that means that, I, that that's what i mean by alternate universes yeah 
that that's I don't know, but then they also allude that this is something about the universe is colliding or some other shit. I'm not sure. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but I have to agree. I think this is all just one big stew of shit that is happening just to keep Zach and Aerith alive for future events. So maybe as a for different stories, because that's what's happening here. You know, a lot of um, uh, folks were quick to compare this. Uh, to Neon Genesis Evangelion. And if you don't know that, that, that series originally had an anime run. Depressing as fuck ending. <laughs> uh, uh, look it up whenever you get the chance. But then later down the road, we got a movie series, the Rebuild series, where it starts the same, but then quickly divulges into something else. Like, And, and folks are taken aback by that. That's not what's supposed to happen. And then it had more movies to expand upon a different storyline. That is what folks are thinking what's going to happen with Remake. It's going to have similar beats, but it is essentially uncharted territory. We don't know what's going to happen and what's going to progress from this point on. And I'm excited, but I also feel, I'm not going to lie, I also feel a little cheated. Because mm -hmm. there are now going to be key moments, I feel. Again, this is all speculation because we don't exactly know how this is all going to play out. I yeah. feel now because the the implication, if, if it wasn't outright stated that this is going to be a different story, we're not going to have those specific moments in the original game done in the same way that 90% of this game did beforehand. We might never go to, I mean, what's the context of going to Junin? Uh, we may not fight Midgar's all in the same way. We may not go to the Mithril Mines, Fort Condor, Cosmo Canyon, Gungaga. There are a lot of things that could potentially be warped or handled differently that are not one-to-one -one the same as the original game, unlike what Remake did, you know, again, for like the first 90% of the game, and now, now it's all different. Again, I, I'm I'm excited, but I also feel like oh, that's it's kind of sad in a way too, <laughs> because I, I was yeah. expecting, I was expecting for the most part a one to one remake with added story beats. Yeah, that's that's the tricky part. It, it, in some ways, it gives them free reign to like, okay, we don't need to do the world map anymore. We can change up how they go about this stuff. But there's also other aspects where you wonder how they're going to treat certain things, and it comes as soon as like calm. Are they, is Cloud still going to recount his whole experience with Sephiroth? Because in the original game, that's where we really saw Sephiroth for the first time. Yeah, we saw his sword before, but we didn't see Sephiroth. I would rather they talk about what the hell just happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, yeah. Like the first two hours of the game is just about a bonfire. All right, you first. <laughs> yeah. And the, well, the, that's the thing. The, the Cloud says when he first sees Sephiroth is, I, isn't it like you're dead or I killed you? In the original, he had no idea what happened to Sephiroth. He just knows he confronted him and somehow survived. And Sephiroth is reported dead. He doesn't know if he actually was dead. Mm -hmm. And so this indicates that he knows what he did, which means how we know his memory is screwed up. But how screwed up? Is it as screwed up as before or is this something different? Not to mention, there is something that is significantly different. Uh, and this is before all the thing goes to shit, <laughs> like at the <laughs> ending. But it's when they confront Hojo. Hojo immediately recognizes Cloud. And he, well, he, rec he recognizes Cloud from the eyes, like everybody does. But then he drops, with everybody else listening, that you're not in Soldier. You never were in Soldier. What the hell are you talking about? And they don't follow up on that, like, immediately after it happens, because there are bigger issues at hand here. But that's that's it. Cloud was exposed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, that's yeah. something you had to learn in this too. Like, when you're trying to rejigger his memory and all that. But no, that that's just, he was, he was exposed right then and there. So if they decide to have, like, uh, the, the calm flashback uh, with Sephiroth, there was just like, uh, you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tifa might call him out this yeah, time. <laughs> it's like, uh, Hojo said, you're never word sold. You want to explain what that's about, buddy? And I was like, I was kind of hoping you forgot about that. No, <laughs> no, I'm not going to about that. It, it, I've had it heard it suggested that the next game, who knows, might start with Zack alive because he we see him at the end going carrying Cloud to Midgar while Aerith and Cloud leave it. And it's like, OK, is this going off the idea that Zack survived in the very beginning? And this is how it all like this, them defeating fate at that point rippled throughout the entire thing. And now, you know, Zack survived and all that. I had a dumb theory. Okay. I had a dumb, dumb theory that, like, <laughs> because we're, this might be dealing with alternate universe stuff. You remember that guard who spotted Cloud at the bridge? Yeah. Do you remember the guard who saw him at the Shinra HQ? Yeah. S same dude. What if that's Zack? 
<laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't think it's Zach. Because uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see Zach being demoted to Shinra grunt. I don't, see, I don't see Zach working for Shinra. But they do, you know, there are a couple of references to the compilation here, specifically Crisis Core. If you played that game, you know, because yeah. uh, mm-hmm. one of the, that that Shinra grunt mentions uh, Cousinel, I think, who was one of Zach's best buds in Crisis Core. Who was mm-hmm. uh, I think was also a soldier character. Um, the one fucking disgusting scene with Hojo, discussing like, uh, yeah, but will it breed? <laughs> you know, to keep it alive. <laughs> he, he mentions oh, soldier S types and G types. G types. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can we not bring Genesis? Into this? Yeah, <laughs> I like I like Crisis Core. Genesis is like absolutely Genesis. the weakest part of all. Oh, that. Okay, but again, never, never, you know, different territory, new timeline recontextualize the character into something that doesn't make me groan. <laughs> oh, God. They could follow up on the bonus ending of Dirge of Cerberus Oh, that's now. right. Where do you get that accent? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I almost wonder if they might do a Crisis Core remake or retelling. Or add elements of Crisis Core into the remake, you know? Yeah. Again, recontextualize and elaborate on certain things. Or, because you're going to have to do that now. Because, again, to those that never played the original Final Fantasy VII Zach comes out of nowhere. So many things do. In my so opinion. many things do in the, <laughs> yeah. event, at the very end of this game come out of nowhere. And because in a way, this game is it's almost like a sequel to the original, which is mm-hmm. so bizarre to think about. It's kind of banking on the fact that you've played the other games. And yeah. I don't like that because, again, this is to me is the appeal of Final Fantasy VII Remake and why people have been asking for it for more than a decade, you know, because like you remember when the PlayStation experience happened and they announced that Final Fantasy VII was coming to PlayStation 4 and people were like, what? And then it's just the port. It's just like the original game and people are like, ah, yeah. oh, oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> Man, since the, fucking, since the fucking tech demo for the PS3 dropped, like that, <laughs> yeah. was, that was like 15 years ago. People uh-huh. were wanting this. People were just desperately wanting this to be a thing. And now that it's finally a thing... I can't help but feel the disappointment of others that, look, we wanted to see that story from 20 years ago told in a better way. We want to see it recreated with high definition graphics, with voice acting, with cutscene direction and all this stuff to enhance the story we already love to make it better than it already was. And now we're getting into multiverse spin-off sequel territory <laughs> that, kind of, that kind of assumes you know what happened to Zack, that you know that... Oh, he took on an army of soldiers and then he died. But this time he didn't. It's like, but 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 what do you tell the newbies? I was like, oh, you should play Crisis Core. But no, because that goes into because you're not following up on that timeline. <laughs> and and I, I've seen a lot of streamers who are picking up Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is their first time picking up Final Fantasy VII ever. Yeah. Like they've mm-hmm. never played the original. This has more of an action feel because they don't like turn-based RPGs. They don't like the slower, more methodical system of the original game. So now they're jumping into this one because it's action packed and it's got fun cutscenes. And I'm going to experience Final Fantasy VII for the first time. And at the end of the game, they still don't have any answers as to what Genova is, what Sephiroth is. And they just have more questions than anything because now that we're, we're completely branching away from the original game, that I, and I understand the title now. I understand the title. Yeah. It's like, this is not part one of a remake. This is the remake. Part two is going to be something new. Yeah, that's the implication here is that this is the remake, but I have a feeling they'll still keep a lot of the major sequences in in place. It's just remixing how they're treated, I'm I'm guessing. But again, that's guessing. I just found it so weird and deflating when, like Johnny said, Red 13 sees a vision of him older with cubs, with Midgar as a forest, you know, just a forest because it's no longer the mega city that it used to be. And he's like, we have to stop this from happening. I'm like, what do you have against kids? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's well, that, that's all the other thing about, you know, playing Final Fantasy VII for the first time, not having the compilation in Advent Children where they, hey, there was a sequel and the humans survived. In the original, you have no idea if the planet decided, eh, we'll keep the humans around or not. Yeah, that's true. This, that not, isn't necessarily a good ending. No, it's not. Yeah, I mean, the ending of the original seven did suck <laughs> because it just stops. Yeah. That's the thing. I can completely understand people frustrated. I can, can I, I get it. But the potential is there, and I'm excited for it. And if they can get this level of quality and make it interesting and fun, I'm there for it. But there is, it is so easy to screw up. The one thing I'll say is that 
on a gameplay level, on a music level, on a presentation level, this game was fantastic. Yes, it I was. loved it. Absolutely, and, it's, and it loved still it. is. Like despite what you might think about the ending, whether you're for or you're against it, heavily against it. And I've seen a lot of fucking venomous responses <laughs> to that ending. Yeah, I mean, and, and you're right to do so. I get it, but. Come on, man. <laughs> that game was amazing. <laughs> like, like all the way. Yeah. That journey was incredible. There's This is a fantastic action RPG. Oh, that final battle is a freaking treat. Man, when, I, those... when, when you fight Genova and going through the motions and you're, you're, you're dealing with the fighters, you're thinking about the original and all that sort of thing. You're hearing the remix. And I was like, oh, this is really intense. Uh, I can't wait to start this. And then the fucking third phase happens and it goes mm-hmm. into the original. And it's like, oh! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh my god, that was amazing! I'm a kid again. Are you, you seeing know? the the the, area, the like crazy aerial fight with Cloud and Sephiroth, and actually have that fight with Sephiroth? And you know, it, it's actually random who, or I don't know what determines it, but different people get different characters for that final battle. For me, I got Tifa then Aerith, but I know some, somebody else who got Tifa then Barrett, or Aerith then Tifa, or any other mix. And for me, I got Tifa, then Aerith. And when Aerith showed up, I'm like, she finally gets to fight Sephiroth. Oh, yes. Uh, I didn't get Aerith in my last encounter. I was like, ah, you bitch. I can't do all the materia. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was random. Yeah, yeah neither did I. I. I didn't know that. I thought it was always Tifa and Barrett because of the thematics. Nope. Yeah. Tifa and Aerith. Aerith showed up and she's like, need any help? I'm like, hell yeah, girl, get in here. <laughs> finally get you to fight this guy. <laughs> Heal me, please. <laughs> yeah. And that was my team. So I'm like, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I loved all those final boss fights. Like Rufus was fun. You oh, know, Rufus was something the motorcycle else. chase was amazing. Sephiroth, although I was like, what the hell is happening? That fight was exciting as hell. Yeah. <laughs> and the one winged angel rendition was like, my God, this is crazy production quality for this game. Like, holy moly. But again, man, that that goes into why I think that the, the despite uh, Derek, you're saying something about certain events still happening in future games albeit in it probably in a different context and all that but in a way they kind of blew their load like at the end of this fight because you fight sephiroth i I think the implication if i correct me if i'm wrong is that you're not fighting uh you're not fighting a sephiroth clone you're not fighting an extension of Genova. you're fighting sephiroth like that's him you're fighting him and i mean you don't win i would think he just kind of pisses off and you know and at the the very last thing is you know Sephiroth and Cloud had their little discussion at the the edge of creation and they they replay that one bit from the very end of the original game and it's like you don't do this unless you're planning on doing something radically different for the other games so mm-hmm. but like like but what do you do because you've already used up that, that beat for this for this title yeah the only difference would be actually winning and beating it or something like that because that, yeah. that that was very notable and the whole weird you have seven seconds to make a choice thing like i don't know where that's going there's a lot of things still left up the air and you know for episode two i don't want sephiroth to be the final fight something else needs to be the final battle i don't know what it could be because i don't know where they're going to end it but it can't be it can't end each episode with another sephiroth fight i feel Genesis is coming back. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. Wouldn't that be something if it, the next one focuses more on Zack? Gonna literally fight the meteor. <laughs> it's like the meteor's <laughs> coming down. All right. Oh, oh God. I got my, I'm gonna get my nail bat. <laughs> just, <laughs> just pop that, that's, right out. That said, the, the, the depiction of the destruction of Midgar thanks to the meteor was freaking amazing. Also, one of my favorite cutscenes was when you're in the Shinra building and you get that VR sequence, I guess, that showed the ancients, showed the Genova falling how many years ago, and then the idea of Neo Midgar. That was cool to actually see. It was funny that, like, the ancients were basically like the old Final Fantasies, like, <laughs> yeah, like they were. Through five. <laughs> I would have just liked to say it went really fucking meta, and it was just Final Fantasy X. <laughs> like, it, it's like, oh, that oh somebody, somebody told me this. I have not looked at it myself, but you know, the President Shinra section of the, of the Shinra building, you know, how it has those little monuments for him. Yeah. yeah. There's a photo there, and somebody took a closer look at that photo, and there's a hooded figure. That or no no not a hooded figure somebody guy with a gas mask oh no which might be, which might either be just oh, a little Easter egg no. or be yeah that's Shinra from Final Fantasy X too <laughs> this game goes for it man <laughs> he's just a kid 
Avengers is the most ambitious crossover. <laughs> 2020. It's just like fucking holding my Mako reactor. Yeah, it's like, nope. Turns out every Final Fantasy is connected. God, I hope not. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the ending's going to piss a lot of people off. That's all. Yeah, or at the very least confuse newcomers because they have no idea what the significance of that, any of that is. That, that's why I'm so curious how people are going to, if the newcomers that do experience this, are they going to jump right into the original just to see what the heck's going on and maybe get some more into, uh, clarification? Or are they going to be just like, well, screw this. I have no idea what's going on and I'm going elsewhere. What will playing the original do? Because the, the remake changes the ending. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, because like, oh, maybe if I play the original and I can see what happens after the, the second, oh, wait a minute, but we didn't fight that Harbinger. We didn't, uh, Sephiroth didn't fight us here with another Edge of Creation seven second shit. What's going on? And I was like, oh, this is different. <laughs> and they stop playing after Midgar because they're not going to get the answers they're seeking. Not for another five years. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Yeah, that is the question. How long we have to wait for this? <laughs> That's oof. that could be a little rough, but like unless they're just taking the exact same assets and just remixing it, and I don't know how long it will take. Yeah, but... we're we're talking about that uh, on my uh, my Discord server a couple of days ago. Where I don't think the development will be as long because they did make a lot of assets for this one, and they're going to reuse shit. Like, make yeah. no mistake about it. They're going to reuse shit. So besides generating a, a world map, or at least they're, they're, they're probably going to keep it still con- confined to, like, linear tunnels, a la uh, Final Fantasy X and uh, thirteen. But I, I think that won't take nearly as long because nothing is as expansive. Nothing else in the game, uh, original or remake otherwise, is as expansive as Midgar. Like, that is the largest yeah. thing in that game. So yeah. uh, what do they have afterwards? Calm, that's easy. Uh, Mithril Mines, that's easy. Junin might be, like, the second Junin, biggest thing. Yeah, Junin is, like, the next big thing. Gold Saucer, actually, with what they did with Walmart. Uh, oh, my God, Gold, gold Saucer. saucer. I want to see that so bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there is a Gold Saucer in Final Fantasy XIV, and that that one is, is pretty uh, expansive in its own way. It has, like, a lot of other, like, fun little things. I want it to be that on crack. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. And I think you had a good idea. Uh, you had talked about this before you beat the game on Twitter, Clement, about uh, we need to reset the character. So have Yuffie steal all the materia with all the connections like they're yeah. talking about Wu Tai and the Wu Tai War and all that. It's like, mm, that's pretty feasible. Because like, my thing was, you know, there's no way we're going to be able to carry over our progress into the second game. So I'm just like, why would our materia be gone? Hmm. I mean, if only there was a ninja girl who could steal all of Can it. Can you answer for me this one? Because you, you guys are probably a little, come at the very least, would know this. Because I asked that question uh, a week ago, thinking about that, where we're going to play the second part, and it's going to be a continuation, but it's also like, are you starting back from square one? And then some folks mentioned Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. Yeah. Now, I, don't, I never played those games, so I don't know how those games handle progression in a way, despite being games in their own way. Like, do you think that can work? I mean, what do they? What, what does Mass Effect two and three do? Mass Effect two destroys your original ship. Oh shit! So all of your gear is gone. <laughs> all of your gear blows up, and you start off on a new, uh, a new Normandy and a new crew. So you, none of your gear would be intact. But with part three, Shepard gets arrested by Earth. Um, and then he goes to trial. Wait, wait, Earth? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Like, this the Earth, Earth government. Is, okay, okay, okay. Government. I think Earth know. just grows hands and cuffs him. It's <laughs> <laughs> a couple <of> boys. <laughs> but he breaks away from the Cerberus group he's hanging out with in part two and joins back up with the Alliance in part three. So there's always like these these reasons he wouldn't have his gear from the last okay, game. All right. What about his stats? Hey, level one. Level yeah. one. He's just back to level one. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think, okay, so here's the thing. But the, the game immediately ends after you, you defeat, Se- well, at least sh- shoo Sephiroth away for a bit. <laughs> so, and we don't we don't immediately follow up on that afterwards. So maybe their justification is like, uh, we, 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 we averted destiny, but they took all of our shit before, we, before they <laughs> left. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> yeah, man. This is so fascinating. Just thinking about what the future mm-hmm. holds for this new new prologue featuring Zach uh, going into Midgar and being like, because here's the other thing. Big survived. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. They show that sequence. Where Apparently, Big... Jesse did, too. Apparently, is that the implication? Because I thought because I know like there's the bandana and the glove on top of the, the dresser. But I always thought that was just Big's. 
Like I thought that was just yeah, his stuff. That's what I thought. Yeah. Cause I just, I'm just going by what people on the internet said was that it's Jesse's bandana and gloves. So presumably she's alive as well. I don't know. Maybe I have to take a better look at that. I, I do know the whispers go out of their way to presume, presumably kill wedge. It's like, because he's trying to fight, fight past him in the Shinra building. They took him to like the glass and all you hear is the glass breaking and that's it. That's the last she, yeah, you don't, you don't fade to black unless you're just trying to play it. To, he's alive because otherwise why not just show that? Yeah. You know, it's like, why, why, why be so discreet? Well, cause he'd be a puddle. <laughs> He's be, I, yeah. So <laughs> let the bastard fall. <laughs> Unless they have plans for him in the future. The, there's no reason why he'd fade to black for that and keep, leave it up in the air. He's alive. He's probably going to yeah. be heavily crippled by the time we see him again, because, you know, climb 59 stories. But, uh, I, I still think, you know, maybe he had the grappling hook. Maybe, maybe like he tried to save himself again and it fell off. And he, you know, maybe he can't use his legs anymore or some other shit. I don't know. Yeah, possibly. But it, I'll go into my dumb, dumb, dumb theory, Clement, since you had one. Okay. Um, since Zach survived, he goes into Midgar, looks for everybody. And, you know, his first thought is, oh, hey, I'll go check on, you know, Aerith, that girl I love. Goes to Sector 5. It's like, oh, she's not there. Oh, hey, there's this guy named Biggs here that helped out all the children. You were helping with Avalanche? Oh, sure. I'll help you up. I'll be a mercenary and help you out. But hold on, I have to, I have to argue against that because okay. the implication at the end was Zach survived his encounter with the soldier, but I still think that was like still from five years ago. No, no, it wasn't five years ago because uh, he dies right, he dies right before Cloud arrives in. Midgar. Yeah, they, they literally stop at Midgar's doorstep. Cloud goes right to the train station. Tifa finds him, and then the bombing mission happens. No, so, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I think it was at least no, no. It wasn't five years. Five years ago is when the incident happened. And then I know that Zach and Cloud were inside that tube in the mansion for, I think, a year? Yeah. Yeah, think. No, five years. Five, five <laughs> years. No, no, was it five? I thought it was like... No, yeah. because I did yeah. not get the idea. I think the idea was... Oh, fuck me. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> uh, wait. So, Zach... No, Cloud gets to Midgar. Tifa finds him in the train station. Uh-huh. I thought that was like a year before the event happened. Because why the hell is no. like... I was like, oh, you should, oh, Cloud, you're alive. Hey, look, we're about to bomb this reactor. <laughs> Would you like to go up? I, I that's, mean, that's, that's, that's way too soon. In, in when Cloud's collecting all of his memories, it, Tifa recounts how she found him kind of dozed, dazed out at the Sector 7 train station. And yeah. when she talked to him, she, that's when his memory sort of fully reformed uh, with the, his old memories and Zach's memories. Yeah. Because Z- uh, Cloud does not wake up from a stupor until after uh, Zach is dead and he finds Zach's body and decides to take the braver and take in that take that whole personality. And again, um, even though characters never change clothes ever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think the implication was because Zach put Cloud in uh, soldier gear, you know, he just put that on, and that's why when he's in Midgar, you know, he, that's something Zach just gave him, and it's only been like maybe a day or so since Zach oh, died. I thought the implication was like it was like at least a year because that's way too. It's like I had a traumatic experience, but sure, I'll bomb a reactor with you. No, <laughs> no, it was right <laughs> after he goes I, right uh, into okay. it. I, I think I'm, I have to go back and look at that. No, the screwed up part is that Cloud and Zach have been in that those tubes and experimented on for like years. But that's Hojo for you. <laughs> I suppose so. And he's oh, just as slimy oh in this. Oh my God. <laughs> he was great in this. <laughs> he, he really was. So was. Like, what a slimy piece of shit. I'm going to punch him with that teeth. Like, <laughs> like even the cat, like, 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 like first drop of his a mention of him, it was with Cloudy. Like, he clearly was mentioned that son of a bitch, Hojo. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, nobody likes this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is just a yeah. disgusting model, too. The way his he mouth really moves is. and whatnot. Yeah, He's like, they something... really they really exaggerated his facial details for this. Uh, compared to uh, Crisis Core and Dirge of Cerberus, which is, like, the only other times you really got a 3D model of the dude. And it's like it's it works so well. It was like, yeah, man, this dude can't wait to see him sunbathing. <laughs> <laughs> if it happens, yeah, again, if it happens, if it happens again, everything's different now. Now he's be sunbathing on top of Midgar, <laughs> right under the sun lamp, <laughs> like directly <laughs> underneath it. They gotta catch all the rays. <laughs> I love this game. I it really do. Really is great. I'm itching to go back into it. Uh, probably not gonna go into hard mode just yet because there are. Uh, couple of things i might have missed along no i did every side quest i kind of want to do all the vr fights in normal mode first before i decide to tackle them in hard mode just so at least i know what i'm getting into i recommend that uh, the best idea is uh in order to get the extra vr fights the hard mode vr fights you have to um complete all the stuff at the uh corneo Col- coliseum yeah 
And so that includes both the Aerith alone and Barrett Tifa alone. If you want Tifa, uh, Aerith alone for those missions, you have to go right back in before talking to Madam M after the Hell House fight. Um, if you want to get those done for her, for Tifa and Barrett, you can get them in chapter 14. Um, and then at the very beginning of chapter 17, uh, there's a offshoot where you can get into the VR thing again and uh, take on all of those missions, both normal and hard. I have my reservations about the ending. I think that it was a big mistake. Because to me, Final Fantasy VII is almost bigger than Final Fantasy because it's just the most popular game. Yeah. And people have been excited for it for more than a decade. I think the ending was kind of a misstep. I think we wanted the original story. We didn't want these open-ended choose your own adventure. Maybe Tifa will die this time, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> but the game's been so fun and I've had such a blast playing it that whatever comes out next, I am going to pick up because it's going to be fun and the music's going to be amazing and it's going to look awesome. I I do wish it was the original story. Yeah. I don't, I wish they didn't have this fate stuff and this, because I the only thing I don't like is, is I don't want them to dilute them the messages of the old ones because like people feel mm -hmm. like zach and Aerith died for a reason because it, it helped with the story it helped build cloud's character and all this stuff and having them back to life is just sort of like well that didn't happen the game's themes are very spiritual in essence never ever ever was the concept of destiny or fate brought up in the original game because that's just not what seven was about but now it introduces these metaphysical concepts just to play things differently. I'm not sure just for the sake of just doing something different with these characters in a new context because they feel that... Because okay, no, another argument for that is that the original game, there's not much you can do in terms of just like captivate the audience in terms of like shocking them or... Because the, everybody knows Eric dies. Like everybody knows this, the plate falls. Everybody knows like the weapons are released. Everybody knows Sephiroth gets the black materia. And I feel it's like it's not enough for them to just remake it in higher definition. They want to do something else that can replicate the feeling that everyone felt in 97 when Aerith died and all that. And I I know. <laughs> I know Aerith dies. I know Aerith dies. I still want to see it in HD. <laughs> <laughs> you sick bastard. <laughs> the, the only thing I think would be an interesting direction is if like let's say this is like a such an open-ended game where you get to make all these choices to significantly change the story and what if you can just make the story exactly the way it was like what if you can just play it exactly the way the original was and it plays out exactly like the original was but you can also change it completely differently and go in a different direction i don't know it's gonna be have a uh, undertale <laughs> pacifist genocide round <laughs> <laughs> that'd be something it's like, i mean one of the lives. One of the thoughts I had is like, uh, no, Cloud dies and Aerith becomes the main character. <laughs> How much of a wife beater do you want Sid to be? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You, you, know, you know what I realized earlier, Clement, when you were talking about how you, you love the gameplay, you love the graphics, you love the music, you love all this stuff, but the story... Welcome to being a Kingdom Hearts fan. Oh, right? <laughs> Final Fantasy that's VII why, becomes peak that's Nomura why at the I end. don't like it, because it's like, you don't need to do that. Kingdom Hearts is already where we get our clusterfuck of shit. It's like, it's fine. It works there. Actually, it doesn't work at all. But, you know, I expect it there because that is its own entity. It is its own franchise. Don't start doing that shit with this, especially not the biggest one of them all. Like, you, Well, the Nomura is not right. It and we have no, Katase he's not writing it. it, but he is directing it. He gets the final say, he gets to say, like, uh, can you change it up a bit here? Add more of this shit here. Dementors, Harry Potter, fucking love those guys, <laughs> like, just <laughs> throw them all over the place because we have to have a, a, some meta commentary about how a lot of folks, and it's working by the way, are gonna be pissed that we're changing things up. So they, they show up and try and keep things intact, but it's, inev it's inevitable you can't change fate because at the end of the day. I'm the director. <laughs> I'm fate. What I say goes. Play Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> but, uh, God, but it's, again, it's working because... It's, I'm excited. Yeah. I can't wait for the next one. Neither can I. On a gameplay level, it's going to be amazing. Yes. A gameplay level, it's going to be amazing. I am so fucking worried about the story, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you know? there for the... You know, it, it really is going to be part two. If part two falls apart, you're like, okay, I know what I'm in for. It's yeah. going to be garbage, <laughs> but I'm going to enjoy playing it. If it pulls off the story somehow, 
let's keep this ride going and let's see how they end it all. Who knows? Because I have a feeling this could be like a four part story. I think uh, given the direction that they're going in, because now because now what they did the thing with the, what they did with the ending that kind of alters what I believe how many parts are going to be this because originally I thought it's like they're not going to just do three discs like three parts for three discs because it doesn't really work out. Now I'm thinking otherwise maybe it will be three parts just like the original was three discs because it's a different story they want to tell who's to say it can't be confined into a three part story. So I'm I'm thinking it might just be three. That's what that's what they do with Final Fantasy games. Every Final Fantasy especially 13. Yeah. 13 had three parts. You know, uh 10 had two parts when there's also that audio drama that nobody likes to talk about um <laughs> <laughs> apparently what i heard titus explodes yeah, titus kicks a bomb thinking it's a blitz ball and loses his head he gets better but it's he gets better <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, i mean he did but disappear he gets, before so it makes so sense so. stupid but <laughs> you know but anyway the point is square likes to do things in threes and well for the most part I don't think it's going to be four. Yeah. I think it's going to be three. I mean, I think you could get part two, uh, disc two and disc three, or the rest of disc one and disc two. Nothing happens in disc three, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, given how much they fleshed out for everything else, you can find new things to do. Like, yeah. in, in, uh, for the remake. Well, they can't call it remake anymore. Now it's just other yeah. Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know what you would call this. What would you call the second game? Rebirth. Rebirth? Yeah, Maybe. Rebirth. A remake because of the uh, the connotations of everything that happened in the first game. Rebirth because we're growing from the thing that we did in the th- first game. Regret because nobody liked the Rebirth. <laughs> <laughs> Regress. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry, let's do that again. I have nothing else to say. Uh, I think we're pretty much done here. Does anybody else have any closing thoughts before we wrap this up? The only thing I was saying is it's just, it was a great game. I just didn't like the last hour, but otherwise it was great. And if you want, you should pick it up because it's fun. You should pick it up because the soundtrack's incredible. You should pick it up because everything up to that hour was perfectly fine. <laughs> but I am excited for the sequel in a way. I mean, not particularly for the story, but in terms of music, gameplay, it's like Kingdom Hearts where I don't really, I kind of gloss over with the plot. But I still have fun playing it. I still had fun playing Kingdom Hearts 3. Pretty so. much my opinion, exactly. I, I really can't say much more than that. Uh, I'll put more in physical. God, that fucking soundtrack's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh-huh. like the, the there remix, are so many moments in here just The remixes pop. of the original themes are, are one thing, but the original stuff, too. Like, the, new, the stuff that was newly added for this remake, I feel, were so good. And you know what? It's like, it was one of those... One of those fist pumping moments where your instincts are correct when someone validates your thoughts. Because uh, when I was starting to hear the original piece, it's like when you're between sectors or when you're in the collapse. Uh, one of my favorite pieces is actually the collapsed expressway theme when you're dealing with all the giant hands and all that sort of thing. And mm. I was like, this reminds me a lot of Ten. I was like, I'm getting a lot of Final Fantasy Ten vibes, and I love Final Fantasy Ten soundtrack. And uh, mm. someone confirmed to me that it was the same composer. I was like, yeah, fucking yeah. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, he's got a distinctive sound. I, I, I love that beat. And it's like, all of his contributions to this soundtrack are phenomenal. And I, 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 it's one of my favorite soundtracks in the series, I would say now, because I absolutely love it. I thought I would never get something as good as uh, the original seven or Final Fantasy nine for that record, because uh, those are my go-to Final Fantasy soundtracks. Mm-hmm. Can't say it enough. But yeah, uh, just to again mimic what uh, Clement said, great game all across the board until the end. But only if you played the original, I feel it has the most impact on you. But even then, if you never really played Final Fantasy beforehand, you're confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. You and really, you, the funny thing is, you really need to play the original before playing this. <laughs> yeah, to be pissed off. <laughs> 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 Either you're lost or you're pissed. Yeah, take, yeah, take there's your no in between with that one. But, or you could end up like me that, you know what, I'm like, all right. Let yeah. me see what you throw me. I mean, I mean, it's it's largely it's it's largely hyperbole. Like, I don't really yeah. fucking like. Oh, this is a piece of shit. It's ruined. <laughs> it's like, no, I am excited, but it's a yeah. cautious excitement because I don't. I yeah, you don't. Oh, you fear what you don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact that they got the characterizations so right, right. gives me a lot of hope. Uh, this is this is not Advent Children Final Fantasy we're dealing with. This is not Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy we're dealing Ugh, with. But it could be. <laughs> yeah. They, they kind of learned their lessons from cr- what Crisis Core did right. And even just the last decade of Final Fantasy, I felt like it, it, yeah. it understood how to do a good stagger system better than 13. It understood how to do combat better than 15. I just think mm. 
it was a huge improvement. Yeah. So I, I'm enthused about this uh, remake. I love the combat, love the music, love the graphics, uh, love the characterizations. I even kind of dig the ending and I cannot wait to see what they do next. It's going to either be, like I said, there's, it's, there's no in between. It's either going to be a train wreck or it's going to be like, wow, this worked. And I'm very curious to see which one it's going to end up being. Hey, I'm enjoying Final Fantasy. I haven't had <laughs> that chance in a yeah, while. Yeah, <laughs> God, that, I'm not looking forward to the fucking fan base being divided. I was like, like, like when this is so, when this is all done and it has a different story with a different conclusion for all these different characters, everyone's like saying, well, what did it better, the original or the remake? And you got the same Final Fantasy Seven fans being split in the middle. It's like, yeah, it's Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, no matter what happens next, people are still going to be mad that it's like. They changed it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all. It, Where's yeah. the remake? Where's remake two? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people did this, this. That bridge has been burned and they're done. <laughs> yeah. There is there's no coming back. There is it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, now it's time to see if they stick the landing. Yep, exactly. I'm actually kind of curious, Clement, if you're going to tack this on to your retrospective. When I get to it. <laughs> it's like bitch don't put me on the spot <laughs> i'm playing the slightly mediocre 13-2 right now so. but that game seems amazing after playing 13 <laughs> it is better than the original way better than the original okay well uh we're gonna call it a wrap for this discussion Derek clement thank you again so much for joining me in this because i really wanted to just geek out for the last two hours and i did not leave this conversation disappointed <laughs> <laughs> just feels so good to get all this out because I want to talk to folks about it. And I was like, I can't, I can't say it on Twitter because I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> yeah. I had to be so vague when I wanted to talk about the ending. Cause I was just like, if I even give a hint as to what the ending is, I'm They're going to know something changes. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it was with you guys. I'm like, I, I can't say anything. I got it. I want to talk to you about it, but I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's it again we can't say it enough this is a fantastic game you should go get it right now more than worth its price tag and there's definitely stuff to look forward to if you stuck it out well if you stuck it out this long you you, you ruined it (laughs) (laughs) there's still moments that we didn't talk about yeah there are a lot of nuances we didn't touch upon there are a lot of shit that we didn't cover here but we hope you consider picking up the game and enjoy for yourself it is a fantastic uh, recreation of a already fantastic RPG go ahead and play it Uh, Derek well, where can they find you if they, they already know who you are? <laughs> you guys can find me over on Game Explain. I have a couple of guides and compilations of Final Fantasy VII. So if you don't want to go through the uh, the repet- repetitive nature of getting all the dresses, I have a video showing all of those off so you can see what everybody wears. Uh, just to plug one video in particular. Otherwise, I am actually going to be going over to Twitch soon for streams uh, and playing a bit of that. And I might end up doing hard mode uh, for Final Fantasy. I, first, I'm starting off with the two two Klonoa games uh but uh after that open book so my twitch is at uh, bit nerd gx b-i-t-n-e-r-d gx so there you go and you clement uh my youtube channel is clement j642 i am in the process of doing a final fantasy retrospective right now i've been doing it for like three years so it's been like I- i've gone from one and i'm all the way to 13 right now i'm doing 13 2 lightning returns 14 and i can't wait to play with johnny when i get to 14 madman uh, you never leave the game <laughs> i might join you if no I, if i'm in the po- <laughs> process of like somebody else new with me I keep hearing about how amazing 14 story is. You, you can't know, tease me like this. Not of the void you guys are jumping into. You're, you're teasing me with apparently the best Final Fantasy story in ages. Like, no, you can't do that to me. <laughs> I got to I got to know what that's about. But, uh, and uh, I also do Let's Plays. I did the entire Sonic series and that's done. <laughs> I've done a lot of stuff. Go check out my channel if you're interested, if you like my voice. I do recommend you guys to watch that Final Fantasy Retrospective. Series oh, it's so good. That, the, the, that's a really fucking good look back at a man's love for a franchise. And uh, I'm kind of dropping this now because uh, one of my major projects for this year is finally starting Final Fantasy. And uh, I'm not going to be doing it all in a row, God forbid. And <laughs> uh, I'm going to be handling it in threes. I'm going to do the first three, take a break, then the second, third, and then the oh, oh, so, so on and so forth until I get to the end. But uh, that's that's my major project of this year. So if we want to get like a sneak preview of what my opinions are watch Clement stuff (laughs) 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 my videos probably won't be as long because uh, I gotta gotta keep things condensed for the sake of retention shit but 
it is a there's a lot to talk about with this series and if, if you guys didn't already get an idea of how much this game how much this franchise means to me then you guys are in for a treat because i cannot wait to divulge into that series as a whole uh that mm. said we're not done with resident evil <laughs> we're not done with kirby yet and those speaking are of remakes yeah, speaking of remakes, <laughs> non-stop yeah, my, remakes yeah I, my remake video just dropped a couple of days ago hope you guys enjoyed that i'm currently working on kirby squeak squad which is nowhere near as long and it'll probably be not that long of a video but after that uh we're gonna stop kirby for a bit and then i'm gonna finish off resident evil get the uh, entire focus a bit finally gonna upload that damn dark side story of sonic 2 sonic Adventure 2 randomizer because i've been holding that off for a while and uh, that's pretty much what I have on the docket for now. So, uh, guys, if you don't have anything else to say, uh, I don't know how to end this off. <laughs> that, that, that got him, him edited. Neither did Square. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, you got to fight Destiny, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, well, thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night. Take care. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wipe your ass. Don't hug all the goddamn toilet paper. And play Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's a good game. Take care, guys.